praises be unto the Most High, Almighty, Ahia, Shahia, Christ, our Lord and Savior, Father who raised him in holy wisdom, is brought and anointed. This is the Essene Community Church of Christ. My name is Archbishop Shamar. And I'm Bishop Barak. And we'll be bringing you today's Sabbath report slash lesson. All right. Um, um, the last weeks we were going through the the virgin birth, breaking down the law of nature, understanding and, and going back into the Old Testament to see how these things were possible and, and the foreshadowing of these things. And this week we're going to go and we're going to actually go and take a look at some help. All right. And before we even, you know, we're going to go and look at the body, the anatomy of the body. All right, we're going to take a look at a specific part of the anatomy of the body, which is the digestive system. And a lot of people don't know, but this all goes back even to the Bible. All right, it goes back to the beginning, to Adam. If you want to learn about this, if you want to understand this, all right, it all goes back to the Bible. And the Bible, once we have that in place, it will bring the best understanding. All right, clearest understanding and the clearest understanding. All right, and that's always all right guaranteed by our Father. All right, the Most High, Mighty High, the Christ. All right, the Word, the Truth, the Light. That that is a guarantee. So it's no different with this topic. All right, as we've been, you know, when I was going through this, um, we did health before, but now that we're even getting stronger in mind and able to eat even stronger foods, we went back to relook at the health, all right? And we've seen that, you know, we can help further the understanding when it comes to health. Because we see that even when people are um, exercising or they're doing um, diets, things of that nature, they're doing it, but once again, they're doing it without full understanding of what you're doing, all right? So there couldn't be some you know, basic understanding or understanding of the one thing that you're doing. But what the Bible gives you is a whole scope, a full view on the whole purpose of all of it and connecting everything so that you can have, once again, the clearest vision and the purest understanding of what's going on, all right? So that you can now achieve that which needs to be achieved. So one thing I've seen with health and things of that nature, there's too much unknown areas um, for people to operate and, you know, for them to come out with proper um, results. So people do come out with results, all right? But once again, um, mankind deals with what they see physically. So they just will try a bunch of things, and if it works, they'll just continue doing that. And they don't know what it's really doing, you know, in the whole scope of things, but what they were trying to achieve happened and it worked. So they just do the same process over and over again. All right, in contrast to understanding the whole anatomy of the body, what happened, what transpired from the beginning, and now getting a clear view on, you know, how to go about things. All right, so the church always gives that perspective. And we're going to try to give that perspective today um, and clear up some things when it comes to the body, health, and diet. All right, so once again, before we go into this, we're going to go to Isaiah 53 and 1. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? All right. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? All right. So in the Old Testament, the Most High, all right, sent in Isaiah. And even Isaiah had to ask the question, who's going to believe the report? And to whom is the arm of the Most High revealed? All right. Because how the Most High operates, we know he operates in secrecy. All right. He chooses uh, a known prophet or someone who reaches a certain stage and he reveals the word of the Lord unto them secretly. The word reveals what was revealed unto him, unto the, the individual. And then they're sent out to the people to proclaim that. All right. Thus saith the Most High. And it's on the individuals to, to, to comprehend, to see, to ask, to do whatever they need to do to understand the message of the messenger. All right. And with that, that allowed false prophets to get in, knowing how he operates in secrecy, to say, oh, the Most High is dealing with me now, all right? Because you can't know, because the Most High deals in secrecy with these individuals, all right, and brings them out the same way with Moses, when he brought Moses out 
and the children of Israel was asking him to see these things and he had to make him do, you know, different miracles and things to, to make them believe that the Most High was with Moses. All right. So we're going to go through these reports to ensure that they're interpreted, translated, and taught correctly. All right. And get in order the diet, the health, and the understanding that we need, especially in these times. All right. So we're going to go to Revelations 18.23. All right. So we are, we know that we're in a time of pandemic. And even in this right now, all this will go back even to the COVID and the pandemic because it all stems from health. All right. Going back to how long have we been um, doing this health stuff now, we've been warning, seeing the scriptures in Clementine homilies saying that disease broke out before the flood because of the flesh. All right. And here we are. Disease broke out. And what do they blame? They blame Wuhan. They, they, people can say it's not coming from there or whatever, but we go after what the Bible says. All right? And if it's not coming from there, whatever the diseases come from, these animals, which comes from the flesh, which they just have to go to a market, take whatever, mix it, and now create something and go. But it comes from the killing of flesh and it comes from animals. All right. And, and that's the bottom line. And it's happening once again. So we're going to go to Revelations 18 and 23. The book of Revelations chapter 18, verse 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. All right. So this is in Revelation speaking about Babylon. All right. And this is its destruction and what the Most High was pointing out, all right, was one of the things here, all right, that by thy sorceries, all the nations were deceived, all right. And for this, the Most High was taken out. Babylon, all right, the light of the candle is going to shine no more. It's going to be out, all right. And the bridegroom shall be heard no more at all, all right. Christ is leaving out of it, all right. And all... The great men of the earth were deceived and all the nations were deceived by the sorceries that's going on. All right, and we're going to go into the definition, um, biblical definition of sorcery. This is the definition for sorcery out of the Strong's. This is Greek word G5331, G5331. Pharmakia from G5332, medication, parentheses, quote unquote, pharmacy, that is, by extension, magic, literal or figurative, sorcery, witchcraft. All right, so pharmakia, all right, it's a Greek word, and we see they put that outside, pharmacy. They just have to change it up a little, all right? It's in English now, pharmacy. And yeah, what does it mean? Medication, that is, by extension, all right? So with Hebrew, it deals with a lot of trying to sound out or give you physical attributes of what it's pointing at so it's trying to give you a whole bunch of descriptive words so it's like yes it says it's medication all right but it's magic at the same time witchcraft sorcery all right give us the 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 origin word all right this is the thyroid definition the thyroid here definition. uh the use or the administering of drugs uh the second definition here poisoning third definition sorcery magical arts often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it. The fourth definition, metaphorically, the deceptions and sedu uh, sorry, seductions of idolatry. All right, so this word, once again, Hebrew deals with a bunch of descriptive words to try to point you to what it's speaking about. None of the descriptive words signify healing, health, any of that, all right? What it signified was deception, all right? Use of sorcery witchcraft magic science all right and these things all right people are taught and they're operating day to day and they don't understand all right and by this they're being deceived all right and this by this because once again we're going to go into it they're not able to see what's going on in the earth and, and one of the key things which we know the most high did with us was clean us up and clean our minds up and our thoughts up, bring us back to nature, get us acquainted with that, because this is what you need if you're gonna get your mind in order to understand in the whole perspective in today's day and age. All right, you're gonna need to do that, all right, because of what's been going on. 
all right so we had to go through the health phase do all of that and now we could come to christianity correctly with our mind strong interpret it correctly and go through it and then the most i had to ensure that happened first all right so the nations are being deceived by babylon which we know is the catholic church all right i know a lot of people teach that it's america all right but we will come out soon with a full lesson and show how it's the it's catholic church all right she's the controller of, of the doctrine and the earth all right christ controls all things and you know when he's got here the woman is in control she's in control and through her the deception's happening all right because it's just like the old testament when we're in control all right physical israel was in control all right we control the understanding of god that's going out and what happened with the levites the levitical priesthood was that they started to put out false information all right so this is what he's saying here all right the woman babylon she's putting out false information all right because through her that's how people is going to understand all right and, and she is the first one to be judged through anything so when we're seeing things happen everybody she's the first one to be judged because the most High comes and judges people first all right starts at the, the you know his temple his church so we're going to go to wisdom of solomon 1 and 12. this is the wisdom of solomon out of the apocrypha chapter 1 starting at the 12th verse seek not death in the error of your life and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the work of your hands all right so he says seek not death in the error of your life and this is what a lot of people do all right because if you continue in the error of your life all right and be ignorant of what you're doing is errors and mistakes all right you will end up in death all right and that's inevitable all right it says pull not upon yourselves destructions with the works of your hands all right your own hands your own doing is why you can be dying all right and why many people have died all right because it all starts with us once again we see it says resist the devil you will flee all right it all starts with us we allow it in all right so pull not upon yourselves destructions with the works of your own hands all right there's um there's there's a movie called no salar in that movie a person it's, it's a, a european christian movie um i think it's called something home i'm gonna put it in the chat all right but it's called no salar and in that movie the individual dies and he goes to hell and when he was being judged there and he asked what did he do they told him it was suicide he asked how it was suicide all right because he he died from you know eating and you know and i understood oh how is it suicide and the movie was trying to show that people are killing themselves through their own doings eating he was a doctor and he was doing things a false way and he ended up choking while he was eating all right and he told him it was suicide and it goes and they went into a whole bunch of things as health he was a doctor and he wouldn't allow him to do anything in the heavens he had to look how to heal properly and not the way uh, the world heals all right but just pointing that out because in that show it showed that a person died and they, they were wondering how they got here and it, it came out that it's suicide and they were confused all right and this is what it's showing here that you you do with your own hands that's suicide all right you bring destruction with the own works of your hands, that's suicide. All right, you killed yourself. All right, continue. Verse 13, for God made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things that they might have their being, and the generations of the world were healthful. And there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness is immortal, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to not and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. All right. So God, all right, made not death, neither has he pleasure in destruction of the living. All right. For he created all things. All right, that they might have their being and generation and their generations were healthful. Everything was healthful. All right. Adam and Eve brought death into the world. All right. They brought it in. All right. And we see here, the most I showed that when he had everything, everything was healthful. He never made anything to be unhealthy. All right. And there was no poison or destruction in them. All right. But once again, ungodly men with the works called it to them and made a covenant with that took part of it 
creation, all right? And Adam, we know it started from him, brought death upon him, all right? This is why we needed a righteous Adam, all right, to redeem us, all right? A second Adam. All right, so we're going to go to Sirach 30 and 15. It's the book of Sirach, better known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, starting at the 15th verse. Health and good estate of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. There is no riches above a sound body, and no joy above the joy of the heart. Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. All right, so health and good estate of body are above all gold, strong body above infinite wealth. All right, there's no riches above a sound body. All right. No joy above the joy of a good heart. All right. As it says, death is better than a bitter life of being continually sick. All right. So the information that we're going to be bringing and we're going through, it's saying that this information, once it's dealing with health and bringing a good estate, this is and this is more precious than any gold or any anything. All right. And we'll see once we get more clarity of how our body operates, all right, according to the scriptures and according to, um, you know, everything, science, and what we're able to put together to bring one vision. All right, so we're going to go to what is a sound mind, all right? What is a sound mind? A sound mind is in a sound body. The proverb, which is of Greek origin, insists that the mind and body should be both healthy and sound. A healthy person can think normally and act instantly in any given situation. A sound body means a healthy body, free from diseases, and it does not bulky body. A sound mind means a mind capable of good, positive, and free thinking mind. A healthy body is obtained by maintaining a good diet and good exercise to keep the body going. A good exercise consists of vigorous exercises or yoga and other such things. To keep the mind clean, we should always have a positive thinking and honest attitude in life. The Greeks gave much importance to a healthy living. They had a very good organized form of life. They ate healthy food and rarely indulged themselves in wine. All right, so here we have, all right, a healthy body. Oh, well, first going back, all right, the proverb, so this proverb is a Greek proverb, all right? A yeah, sound mind is in a sound body, all right? And they insist that the mind and body should both be healthy and sound, all right? And that a healthy person can think normally and act instantly in any given situation. And you best believe with their sciences, with what they do with animals, with knowing the animals are, we have the same flesh as it. And what they do, they they put tests on these to know that when they give you something, trust me, it will affect your mind. It will affect your thinking processes. All right, there's no doubt that it does that because even for us, we know that we couldn't receive this truth unless the Most High brought us through what he brought us through, all right? Which is making sure that we went through a, a health phase. All right, where we zone in on that, all right, because he's bringing us to bigger understanding where you need to have your mind and everything in order, all right, to be able to think correctly, all right, and this is what the Greeks understood. The Greeks understood a healthy person can think normally and act instantly in any given situation, and the Greeks are the ones where the new alphabet came out from, all right, the Greeks had a lot of civilized things that came out from them because they started to understand that, you know what, diet was a heavy part of how they were able to, to get understanding, all right? And they understood that a healthy body was obtained by having a good diet, good exercise to keep the body. If you go outside and you get Greek food, it's normally some good food, all right? They have everything there that you would need. If you stay away from, you know, like you know, the Americanized things, a lot of the what they call Greek sauce or garlic sauce, or, you know. <laughs> but other than that, it has everything that you need when you're going to those side, Mediterranean, anything like that, all right? And they had that from a long time, from these times, where they understood that a sound mind and a sound body are one in one, all right? Which they, they went to many exercises, so they're the ones that came out with, uh, plethora of the, the sportings and things of that nature and we see that 
it's saying that that's a reflection of how they seen health and how they seen the mind. All right, and they barely indulge in these things and they only indulge themselves in a little while. But continue. The Spartans were well known for their organized life and ate just meat, olive figs and fruits, and also trained heavily in warfare and also in sports. This is, the re this is also the reason why they started organizing Olympic games to demonstrate their fitness. This is also the reason that they had a good organized form of democracy in earlier days. Body and mind are connected with each other and enables man to have a contended mind and contended mind leads a man to have a body and meaningful life. A sound mind can function with positive approach if it exists in a sound body. Right, so we see the Spartans, all right, which we know were Hebrews as well, all right. They ate meat, all right. And we're going to go into all of that as we get to why, you know, some people can be able to eat that and still, you know, have a, a healthy body and what they're actually trying to look for inside of that, all right. But we ate olives, figs, fruits, all right. So they didn't eat that much things that were making them bad that we have in today's society. All right, and they state that that's equated to why they're able to set up a, a well-structured government, which is still copied to today, all right? Still a, a frame of government that people use and utilize today. All right, so once again, they believe that body and mind are connected to each other and enables a man to have a contented mind, and contented mind leads a man to have a body and a meaningful life. So once again, if the Most High was gonna bring us along the way and, and bring us to his glory and to his understanding, he had to bring us into a, a health phase, all right? Coming from the Hebrew, coming from Eden and this feast days and you know, not thinking about laws of nature and anything like that, all right? To, okay, having a sound mind, thinking about health, understanding those things. All right, which brought us into a meaningful life, which brought us into the gospel, which brought us into the body of Christ. All right, and able to, to, to help others to see correctly. All right, so we're gonna to go to Sirach 1 and 18. This is the book of Sirach chapter one, verse 18. This is out of the Apocrypha. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom making peace and perfect health to flourish, both which are the gifts of God, and it enlargeth their rejoicing that love him. All right, so the fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom. All right, so the fear of the Most High is a crown of wisdom because everything that we go looking into this, looking into that, comes from fearing wisdom, all right, from fearing the Most High, from seeking out the knowledge. Like, oh, is something inaccurate? Is, it, is God saying something different? And then from there, He'll bring us along and make peace with us, bring us into perfect health to make that flourish, which are all gifts from God, all right? And it will enlarge your rejoicing because now you're going to see that it gave you understanding. You're able to go about and do what you're doing, and you can see the health, you can see the wealth directly, all right? And it's different when it's coming from God. When God gives you a truth, because pe many people think they know something and know a thing, but when God gives it to you, it covers all things in assurance, all right? And you know that you got this different than all times, this understanding God gave you. And, and this is worth, you know, like it said, more than gold. So we're gonna go to the beginning, all right? We're gonna go to the first book of Adam and Eve. And I always tell people, if you wanna know anything, if you wanna know the Bible, yes, you can go to Genesis. If you wanna know what happened with Adam and Eve, you gotta go to the book of Adam and Eve, all right? Because they, tell a lot of truths and i always held to that and as we move along and we're even now going to this health stuff every time i go to the book of adam and eve that book i know was made and left there for us to understand the beginning of time because it tells the perfect story of what's happened to mankind's body and i think that's what people don't understand that book was to let us know what conditions we came from if we paid attention so reading it before people didn't really understand it all right, they just took in the information about Adam and Eve and different, um, different things like that. But it gives us a lot of information coded in there about what happened to the human anatomy in the beginning of time. All right, so we're going to go to the book of Adam and Eve, 
This is chapter 40. 40. It's the first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 40, the first human hunger, verse 1. Then the word of God came to Adam and said to him, O Adam, why didn't you have this dread or this fasting or this care before now? And why didn't you have this fear before you transgressed? But when you came to live in this strange land, your animal body could not survive on earth without earthly food to strengthen it and to restore its powers. And God withdrew his word from, from Adam. All right, so Adam, after he ate, he ate of the fruit now, Adam was doing a lot of fasting and, you know, and the word of the Lord, the most size company, he showed, hey, now you want to fast, you want to do that. Why didn't you fast when Satan was, you know, telling you what to do? All right, and this is why we see in the New Testament now, who do we see fasting, all right? We see Christ fasting, all right, in, in Matthew 4. He's fasting in the wilderness, all right? So Christ is fasting. And Adam didn't fast, all right, when Satan came to him. But Christ was fasting when he came to him. And he tried to give him food, and he stayed fasting. Whereas we see Adam now came to him. Adam didn't fast. Adam was ready to eat. All right, so now we, we're back at the beginning. And now he's saying, Adam, you know, you're doing all this fasting after. Why are you fasting after? All right, why didn't you have this fear before you transgressed? All right, before you sinned. All right, and he's showing us that his body changed. His body changed to an animal body, all right? This is why they do a lot of tests on animals because the, the elites know that we have the body of an animal, all right? So if you want to test them, test an animal. Run a thing on an animal. You can see what will happen to a human, all right? So he had to show Adam, all right? Your body could no longer, you know, go with just fasting, all right? Because before it could have, all right? Your body needs earthly food which is a different type of food. So in the book of Adam and Eve, it's telling us that they have earthly food now. So what we're eating now is earthly food. So when people go and they even go to Genesis 1 and they're looking at um, the fruits that Adam was told to eat and stuff, that's not what we were eating. That's not what we're eating now, all right? That's heavenly food. We're eating earthly food, which is a different nature, all right? This is where it comes to paying attention to the detail to understand what happened from then to now, all right? So the food then was heavenly food. This food is earthly food, all right? This food strengthens and restores the animal body. All right, so we're gonna go to the book of Adam and Eve. We're at chapter 42. It's the first book of Adam and Eve, continuing the same book. Now we're going to chapter 42, starting at the ninth verse. And the Lord said to Adam, O Adam, when you were in the garden, these trials did not come to you. But since you transgressed my commandment, all these sufferings have come over you. Now also, does your flesh require food and drink? Drink then of that water that flows by you on the face of the earth. Then God withdrew his word from Adam. All right, so Adam had to get schooled on everything on his new body, all right? Because his body never needed the water to survive before, all right? And it never needed food to survive before. But now he's fasting, and the trials of fasting were coming on him, all right? And he was trying to explain to him what he needs to do to survive now with his new body, with his new anatomy that was given to him, which is like an animal, all right? He needed to understand he needs water and he needs food. So these are two key things that we, know, we all know that we need, all right? Water and food. First book of Adam and Eve, chapter 64, Adam and Eve partake of the first earthly food. Verse 1, then God looked at Adam and at his strength of mind, at his endurance of hunger and thirst and of the heat. And he changed the two fig trees into two figs as they were at first, and then said to Adam and to Eve, each of you may take one fig. And they took of them as the Lord commanded them. And he said to them, you must now go into the cave and eat the figs and satisfy your hunger or else you will die. So as God commanded them, they went into the cave about sunset and Adam and Eve stood up and prayed during the setting sun. Then they sat down to eat the figs, but they knew not how to eat them for they were not accustomed to eat earthly food. They were afraid that if they ate, their stomach would be burdened and their flesh thickened 
and their hearts would take to liking earthly food. All right. So here, the Most High is showing them now what you have to eat. All right. He brings them a fig. Um, they're eating. We're seeing now, pay attention to the time. It's sunset. So they're eating when the sun was going down. All right. And you see they prayed at the, the setting of the sun. And they're about to eat it, and they don't know how to eat it. All right. So once again, paying attention to details. The, the heavenly food is not consumed like how we're eating this food, all right? We don't know how Adam and Eve was going to eat that heavenly food. But it's not like how we're eating it now, which it's just a fruit. So what they have to do is just bite it, right? So we know that the biting like this was couldn't have been exactly how, you know, they were eating the heavenly food prior. Because he didn't know how to eat this food, all right? They sat down to eat the figs, but they did not know how to eat them. For they were not accustomed to eat earthly food. So it tells us that. They didn't know that they had to bite this like that. All right, so they did not know that they had to bite this food. All right, so they just ate of whatever they just ate of, though. So this is what goes to show that, you know, we have to pay attention to, to the detail. Just because it's saying it's not, you know, giving us the full inner detail of what's happening in, in, in the Bible. But here it's letting us know that whatever they were eating before, they weren't biting it because this is the first time that they know they're trying to figure out how to eat this fig. All right, how to eat the fruit. All right, and what Adam had, Adam had foreknowledge because he's like, he didn't want to eat it. They were afraid to eat it because they believed that their stomach would be burdened. So we're gonna go into that, all right? So he believed his stomach would be burdened and their flesh would be thickened. All right, so the stomach being burdened, as you see, the stomach goes through various things um, once you start to consume something. And he understood that his flesh can be thickened, which I have equated to, um, he's saying that he could get fat. All right, so he was afraid of what would happen with his stomach from eating the food, and then the result of that, which is getting a thick skin, all right, which is becoming fat, all right. And as well, he understood before he even ate it. So this is all before he even took part of it. Adam's already understanding this. All right. That his heart would like the earthly food. So he's like, yo, when I eat this, I know it's going to get addicted and I'm going to be hooked on it. All right. So he understood that going to a next food, it's going to be addictive and he's going to take to liking it. And he's not going to be able to come back to his original way. All right, continue. Verse five, but while they were thus seated, God out of pity for them sent his angel so they wouldn't perish of hunger and thirst. And the angel said to Adam and Eve, God says to you that you do not have the strength that would be required to fast until death. Eat therefore and strengthen your bodies for you are now animal flesh and cannot subsist without food and drink. All right, so once again, he's showing them, all right? God out of pity said in the angel, all right? So they don't perish, letting them know, all right? God says that you, that you, says to you that you do not have the strength to require to fast. So they, once again, they were fasting for long periods after they did that sin from eating of the heavenly food, what they were supposed to eat, that Satan, you know, came and told them to eat. And since then, they've been fasting, scared to eat something again, all right? And now they're being told that their animal flesh now, their bodies can't live without the food, without this earthly food, food and drink. All right, continue. Verse seven, then Adam and Eve took the figs and began to eat them. But God had put into them a mixture as of savory bread and blood. Then the angel went from Adam and Eve, who ate of the figs until they had satisfied their hunger. Then they put aside what was left. But by the power of God, the figs became whole again because God blessed them. After this, Adam and Eve got up and prayed with a joyful heart and renewed strength and praised and rejoiced abundantly the whole of that night. And this was the end of the third, 83rd day. Well, now, the 83rd day since the, um, that happening in the garden. All right. And we see here that they satisfied their hunger. They put aside what was left. And then the Most High blessed that thing and was able to come back and be renewed. So these are the type of miracles the Most High is able to do. 
all right and now adam and eve they got up and they prayed joyful and re with a renewed strength all right so after the, the first people that ate when they ate they came out with a renewed strength after they eat all right so you know that there's things called the itis all right that come out all right and the itis it put you it put you back down to sleep all right and save that people but we're gonna see that that itis all right comes from what we're eating and what's transpiring all right where it's, it's taking away all strength now to where now you're not rising up like adam rose up joyful heart like ah renewed strength they're gone to sleep <laughs> bedtime which is the total opposite what's happening with adam here all right well lets us know that something has to be transpiring all right when this is happening with individuals so we're going to go with the definition of burden because adam said he was afraid of his stomach being burdened all right, burden, which is a noun, so uh, etymology. Or etym yeah, okay, sorry. Which is a noun, quote, a load that which is borne or carried, end quote. Old English, boren, a load, weight, charge, duty. Also, a child from Proto Germanic, berthinjo, that which is born. Source also of Old Norse, by roar. Old Saxon, berthinia, German, berde, Gothic, burpe. From pi root to beher to carry also to bear children. All right. Well, that was the, the etymology of burden. All right, which is a load, that which is born and carried. So he's like, yo, I eat this. Guess what? My stomach is going to have a load, which he called a burden. All right, which is a burden, a weight, a charge, a duty. All right, it's going to have a duty now. It's going to have to do something now. It's going to have to carry this now. It's going to have to go through something now. All right, it's gonna have a burden now. Now that I'm eating, I've carried a burden. So what does that let us know? That, that Adam knew that before his stomach never carried load. It never had a burden, it never had a weight, it never had a duty that it was charged to do, to, to, um, to go through a thing, all right? And we're gonna go to a term, which when I was going through, I found it's called body burden, all right? So we're just going to go through a brief understanding of what the term body burden means. Are you familiar with the term body burden? Body burden is the amount of a toxic substance or toxic load that builds up in the body over time. Over the past 15 years, the CDC has tested over 10,000 people in an attempt to determine their, quote, toxic load, unquote. The results identified hundreds of synthetic chemicals in their bloodstream, many of them present before birth. So, how did they get there? There are many pathways, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, and the substances we come into contact with every day. In many circumstances, exposure is out of our control. However, there is one source we can do something about, the products we use on our bodies. All right, so that was speaking about, you know, this one just came from an article. It's speaking about uh, the body, more so it was going into health products and how the toxic load comes in through there, all right? But it, it honed in that it comes as well through the food we eat, all right? These body burdens, all right? And the stomach, once again, has to go through this phase now as it gets this thing now, this load, this weight, and now it has to go and it's charged with a duty. And this is what we're going to be going through today. What's the duty? of the body when we eat all right what is that duty and it's called the digestive system all right before we go to really go back to the book of adam and eve once again this is the first book of adam and eve chapter 65 adam and eve acquired digestive organs final hope of returning to the garden is lost verse one and when it was day, they got up and prayed after their custom and then went out of the cave. But they became sick from the food they had eaten because they were not used to it. So they went about in the cave saying to each other, what has our eating caused to happen to us that we should be in such pain? We are in misery, we shall die. It would have been better for us to have died keeping our bodies pure than to have eaten and defiled them with food. All right, so here we see, all right, that they ate when it was sundown, now it's day, they got up. And when they got up, they became sick from the food they had eaten because they were not used to it, all right? So 
they got up and they were sick, right? You know, when I seen that, I'm like, you know what, they got up. You know why they got sick? Because when you get up, usually that's when you need to what? <laughs> you need to release. You need to, you know, go use the bathroom, all right? A lot of people use that morning, you know what I mean? I call it the morning apocalypse. <laughs> 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 you remember camping? <laughs> <laughs> everybody needs to go so you go camping you'll really see that everybody yeah. gotta use the bathroom okay <laughs> in that morning <laughs> okay you go camping with a bunch of people you'll see in the morning time that is filled up everyone's stomach's going in the morning all right so this is what's happened it's time for that and when it's time for that now they're gonna become sick because guess what we're gonna see that they don't have the ability to, to do that yet. They're not able to do that yet. All right, so they're becoming sick because they're not used to it. Their body is not used to eating this food. All right, and now they're like, yo, my stomach is hurting. Their stomach is pain in them. All right, and they're like, yo, this pain, this is better that we die. All right, it's better than we had died. All right, or better to have to keep, um, it would be better than to have died keeping their, their bodies pure and to have eaten them. So they're like, yo, we should have just fasted and not, not even ate this food. All right, because the pain that they're feeling from that food in the morning, that stomach hurting, all right, which maybe the most high left all of that a little in there in, in the morning for us. All right, we all had that little morning. Uh, <laughs> it's better I never ate that yesterday. <laughs> okay, but continue. Verse four, then Adam said to Eve, this pain did not come to us in the garden, Neither did we eat such bad food there. Do you think, O oh Eve, that God will plague us through the food that is in us, or that our innards will come out, or that God means to kill us with this pain before he has fulfilled his promise to us? Then Adam besought the Lord and said, O oh Lord, let us not perish through the food we have eaten. O oh Lord, don't punish us, but deal with us according to your great mercy. And forsake us not until the day of the promise you have made us. Verse 6. Then God looked at them and then fitted them for eating food at once as to this day so that they should not perish. All right. So here we see, all right, they're given here that they did not just keep saying in the garden, all right, they neither ate such bad food here. All right. So right now people think this food is good. All right. But Adam and them understood this food was bad. All right. Why? First of all, Adam pointed out that it brings a load into your body, your stomach, all right? And then now it causes the potential for thickening of the skin. So we're going back to Adam. Adam's probably like, yo, he was probably a muscle man, all right? Like, yo, I don't want to lose this. I'm about to lose this <laughs> body right here. Adam, imagine the first man that most high chiseled out. Well, you know, anytime you show pictures of Adam yeah. and Eve, regardless yeah. of the color, they're always fit and yeah. shape. It's the first man God crafted that he touched healthy. Same nothing thing. happened to him, nothing yet. <laughs> this is why he's worried about that, all right? He's worried about, you know, the, the stomach having that burden and then his, his body losing its shape, all right? So them pleading with the Most High now, all right? The Most High looked at them having mercy and he fitted them for eating food, all right? Which comes into the digestive system. He gave them a digestive system so that they are able to now take in that food, all right, as to this day, so that they should not perish. So he enabled them to be able to take in that load and do now a process, all right, to be able to take it out so that they're able to eat food. Because if you eat this food, it has to go through a digestive process and come out. So if you didn't have that, you would perish, all right? They were about to die from what was ever happening to them, all right? They were going to die without that digestive system. All right, so he fitted them so that they would not perish. And he gave them a digestive tract. All right, so continue. Verse 7. Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and crying because of the alteration of their bodies. And they both knew that, that from that hour they were altered beings, that all hope of returning to the garden was now lost, and they could not enter it. For, now, for that now their bodies had strange functions, and all flesh that requires food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, our hope is now lost, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, 
But from now on, we are earthly and of the dust and of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. All right. So here we see Adam and then went back into the cave being sorrowful, crying. Why did they cry and be sorrowful? Adam had a lot of knowledge, all right? Adam knew a lot without the Most High telling him, all right? So with the Most High giving him a digestive tract, he understood with his foreknowledge that, yo, I can't go back in the garden again with this altered body. I can't go back in the garden with a digestive tract, which is why Christ is going to come in and give us a new body, right? You can't go into the garden without a digestive tract. I mean, with a digestive tract. All right. He knew that from they had these new bodies that has to deal with toxins and all of that. This body cannot go into the heavens. All right. You cannot go and take a dump in the heavens. That's, that can't happen. Okay. Most of that happen. Okay. It's purity over there. All right. That's the opposite of that. All right. So continue for us. Verse 10. Then they prayed to God that he would have mercy on them. After which their mind was quieted, their hearts were broken, and their longing was cooled down. And they were like strangers on earth. That night Adam and Eve spent in the cave where they slept heavily by reason of the food they had eaten. All right. So that night in the cave they slept heavily. So they had a deep sleep when they went to bed. All right. So sleep good, you'll be able to sleep. You know, they had a good sleep by the reason of the food they ate. All right, so that's that food puts you in a, a sleep when you go to bed. All right, they so say you have a good meal, you're gonna sleep right. All right, you don't have a good meal, you're not you gonna be able to sleep right. <laughs> All right, so they say. All right, so they slept heavily by reason of the food they had eaten. All right, so here we see the whole incident of Adam and them going through their first time eating and not having that experience and not having the digestive tract to be able to um, to go through a cycle of, of taking out that load all right and, and their stomach was paining them in, in the morning because right? in the morning that's when it's you know a lot of times it's that time for it to come out and they felt like they were going to perish they prayed to the most high the most high gave them a digestive tract and, and their bodies now had strange functions all right and now they understood that they couldn't go back into the garden with a body like this that requires these things, all right? So he notes, once again, Adam did not have a digestive system, all right? He was not made originally to digest food, earthly food. He was afraid of burdening the stomach, afraid of thickening the skin, which we equate with... Um, um, getting fat is, is uh, more fat coming under the skin uh, he understood that his nature was altered all right and he understood the challenges with dealing with earthly food so Adam directly knew these challenges with dealing with earthly food before he even partook of it because he was able to look at it foresee all these things from his understanding that the most high gave him which shows us that Adam knew what these things would have came from when the Most High told him and what he was doing, all right? And this is why I can't blame the Most High or nothing. Adam had full reason and comprehension. A lot of these things, the Most High is not telling him nothing. Nothing's happened, he didn't even eat nothing yet, and he's already knowing what could result from this, which knew, he knew from the Most High, and even, this is how you know the Most High is great, because even with his foreknowledge, and Adam already knew this, the Most High still told Adam this. We see Adam knows these things already. It's programmed in him. All right. So basic understanding of the digestive system. All right. The food in the body. All right. Yes. Yeah. Right, for the digestive system, the food in the body either gives us energy or makes us fat. Unknown ingredients or foreign ingredients to the body are immediately turned into fat. Good recognizable food is turned into energy. Um, in parentheses, alkaline. All right, so we're gonna go through the full understanding. So Adam knew that, all right, the body, all right, either is gonna give you energy, which that's what we see when he ate, what the Most High gave him, which was some alkaline. He gave him a fig. The Most High touched it. It gave him renewed strength. 
all right? Or it could go the other way, which Adam was afraid of, all right? Burdening the stomach, making them fat, all right? So as we go into this understanding, we're gonna learn, all right, how, you know, fat is made, but just, I just put a, a quick understanding that unknown ingredients or foreign ingredients, all right, once they're turned into the body, they turn into fat, all right? Good, recognizable food is turned into energy, which is alkaline. And this is what we've seen um, happen with Adam, all right? The most I gave him something, and it, it said that he rose up, prayed with renewed strength, and he had renewed strength, all right? The most I gave him some alkaline. But Adam, at first, was worried about the other one, all right? He was worried about what would happen with his body if he ate the other way, all right? So give us preservatives. Preservatives stop bacteria from breaking down food. All preservatives stop natural bacter bacteria from activating and breaking down the food to allow longer shelf time. This means inside the body, it also stops bacteria from breaking down the food efficiently. All right, so preservatives. All right, so let's hit these two main points. So, all right, we've seen Adam needed to take this load down, and this load had to go into his body, and we're seeing that now the most had to give him a stomach and all of that, which brings in a digestive system, which we know deals with breaking down. Now, for people to have things with stronger you know, shelf life, they're putting what's called preservative in there, all right? And it shows you what a preservative is. A preservative stops the natural things from coming and being able to break down this food, all right? And it allows it to have longer shelf time. So now the natural things that would take place that would the most high allows a certain amount of time to happen before it, you know, he, he goes and starts disintegrating this thing down now, all right? They put something on it that stops that, all right? So it stops it from being able to be broken down. All right, so with the preservatives, all right, if it's doing that, all right, with the food, and we know we're going to eat the food, it, we know that, you know, it does affect the way the body also breaks down the food because it's meant to, to try to stop the breaking down of the food. So when the gases, the acids, the different things, the enzymes that are using to break down the foods, it's trying to break it down, it's having a harder resistance. So yes, it's still breaking it down, but as resistance and resistance go, things get weaker, all right, especially for the body. All right, if it, we're going to see this, it's not getting renewed strength. All right, so we're going to go into the digestive system. All right, what organs make up the digestive system? Your digestive system is uniquely constructed to do its job of turning your food into the nutrients and energy you need to survive. And when it's done with that, it handily packages your solid waste or stool for disposal when you have a bowel movement. All right, so we know that this is what the Mosai gave Adam, all right? Its job was to turn the food into nutrients to give Adam's body what it needs and then to dispose of whatever was there, the load that's there, take it out. All right, continue. The main organs that make up the digestive system in order of their function are the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. Helping them along the way are the pancreas, gallbladder, and liver. Here's how these organs work together in your digestive system. Mouth. All right, so before we even go there, so the main organs that make up the digestive system, all right, once again, the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. All right, if you go and look at that, that's seven. So these seven things make up your stomach, all right? Seven is completion, the number of completion. So when he gave Adam a stomach, he gave Adam seven compartments of the stomach, which is a complete stomach, all right? Then he now added three parts to it, all right? Which helps with the taking out of the toxins. So these other three parts are pancreas, gallbladder, liver, all right? Is another three parts, all right, that's equated. So the whole of it, it's 10 parts, seven and then three. So you see how they separated those seven from those three, all right? So the full digestive system has 10 parts, 10 steps, 10 stages, all right? And we're gonna go through them. The mouth. The mouth is the beginning of the digestive tract. In fact, digestion starts before you even take a bite. Your salivary glands get active 
as you see and smell that pasta dish or warm bread. After you start eating, you chew your food into pieces that are more easily digested. Your saliva mixes with the food to begin to break it down into a form your body can absorb and use. When you swallow, your tongue passes the food into your throat and into your esophagus. All right, so the mouth, all right, is the beginning of the digestive tract. So the mouth is where it starts, all right? But I'm gonna show you that, even when we go to the scriptures, it shows you that it starts from your eyes first, because your eyes see, and then now your mouth operates. All right, but when it comes to the digestive now, once your mouth gets this, all right, it's the beginning of the digestive tract, all right? Before you even take a bite, all right, your salivary glands start to get active. So as I'm looking through this, our body, and this is what they say, they say that we don't use most of our, 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 our mind, our brain. And that's because what I'm seeing is that it does a lot of things where you can't really, you can't be paying attention to all the stuff that it's doing. So here, now, your body, once you look at something, it's already developing saliva in your mouth. So once your eyes start to look at that and your mind says you want it, it's already developing saliva into your mouth, all right? It says as soon as you see it and you smell it, your salivary, gland, your, um, salivary glands get active, all right? You begin to start chewing it into pieces, all right? And when you're chewing it, you're trying to break it down, so you're helping it, all right? The food begins to break down and mix into a better um, way that your body can absorb it. So all that saliva and all of that's helping it to go into a, a new form, a new stage where it can go and pass on to the next level, or to the next stage. All right, so it swallows, all right, you swallow it, your tongue now is being used to pull that food now into your throat, and now it's gone into the esophagus. So we're gone into the esophagus here. Esophagus, located in your throat near your trachea, or known as windpipe, the esophagus receives food from your mouth when you swallow. The epiglottis is a small flap that folds over your windpipe as you swallow to prevent you from choking when food goes into your windpipe. A series of muscular contractions within the esophagus is called peristalsis, which delivers food to your stomach. All right, so it goes into your, your throat here, all right, and then something ha flap has to be over it. So while it's going into your throat, it has to cover it so that you, you don't choke, all right? When, when it's going down, when its esophagus is receiving food from the mouth, all right? And it's the epilogatus, which is a small flap that folds over the windpipe as you're swallowing to prevent the choking, all right? So to prevent any food from coming out and a, a choke happening, all right? And those contractions when you're going to, and you're swallowing is doing that, it's called a peristalsis, and it delivers the food down now to your stomach. All right, continue. But first, a ring-like muscle at the bottom of your esophagus called the lower esophageal sphincter has to relax to let the food in. The sphincter then contracts and prevents the contents of the stomach from flowing back into the esophagus. When it doesn't and these contents flow back into the esophagus, you may experience acid reflux or heartburn. All right, so from this phase, all right, a ring-like thing at the bottom of the esophagus called the lower esophageal sphincter, all right, that is at the bottom of the esophagus, that it closes and it separates the stomach because the stomach has a lot of acid in there. So when it's being passed now, it has to go through there. And as soon as it goes through there, that part, that, that sphincter closes and it doesn't allow any acid to go back. Anytime we have any acid reflux or feel that little burn in the throat, that means that it missed the mark there. It didn't catch quick enough when your stomach came down and now some of the acid from the stomach went up and now that's what we're feeling in the throat now. All right, so we all had that. Or right, when you're vomiting and you feel that go back up. So the, the sphincter allowed that acid to come up and things, the acid that was inside of your stomach with the stuff is coming back up, which is why your vomit and all of that tastes like all of that. All right, and we all have felt that feeling before. All right, so continue. The stomach. The stomach is a hollow organ or a container that holds food while it is being mixed with stomach enzymes. These enzymes continue the process of breaking down food into a usable form. 
Cells in the lining of the stomach secrete a strong acid and powerful enzymes that are responsible for the breakdown process. When the contents of the stomach are processed enough, they're released into the small intestine. All right, give us the definition of enzyme. Okay, enzyme. All right, so the stomach is a hollow organ. All right, so it's hollow. It's something that's a container. All right, the stomach is a container that holds food while it's being mixed with stomach enzymes. So the stomach is a container, it holds food, and it's getting hit with a lot of enzymes. These enzymes are breaking down whatever it is. Because remember, Adam said that he knew that once he eat this food, he has a whole load now. So the most I had to give it a digestive tract to do something with this load. The load has to go somewhere. And the digestive tract is breaking down this load, doing whatever it needs to do to take the energy, bring it wherever it needs to go, and then take it out of the body. All right, so when it's in the stomach now is when it's getting broken down, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, one of the most. All right, so it could go into your, your um, it could be used as fuel and stuff. All right, and the enzymes are hitting it and it's breaking it down into a usable form. All right, the cells in the lining of the stomach secrete a strong acid, powerful enzymes that are responsible for the breakdown process. All right, when everything is processed enough in the stomach, now it's gone down into the small intestine. Wanna right, give us the enzyme? So the definition for an enzyme out of the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it is a noun, a chemical substance in animals and plants that help to cause natural process such as digestion. Uh, full definition here, any of numerous complex proteins that are produced by living cells and catalyze specific biochemical reactions at body temperatures. All right, so acid. So everybody knows acid. Someone throw acid on you, what is it going to do? All right, it's going to break, it's going to break down your skin. So we know acid, something that's acid eats away at something. All right, so your body needs acid in it. Why? We know it needs acid because it needs to break down this thing inside of you, all right, which acid does, all right? So the way it is, it's in a specific part of your body that's being protected, all right? Continue for us. The small intestine, made up of three segments, the duodendum, jejunum, and ileum, the small intestine is a 22-foot-long muscular tube that breaks down food using enzymes released by the pancreas and bile from the liver. Peristalsis also works in this organ, moving food through and mixing it with digestive juices from the pancreas and liver. The duodendum is the first segment of the small intestine. It's largely responsible for the break continuous breaking down process. The genunum and ileum lower in the intestine are mainly responsible for absorption of nutrients into the bloodstream. Right. So the, the made up of three segments, the small um, intestine, the, the dudum, the genunum, and the ileum, all right, the small intestines is 22 foot long, all right? 22, two, goes back to four, four is the door, all right? It's a long tube that breaks down all the food using enzymes released by the pancreas and the bowel and from the bowel liver, all right? So it's, now it's breaking down even further. So from the stomach, it breaks down and now it goes into the small intestine. It's breaking down again. And now it's being hit with um, enzymes that's released from the pancreas. All right, so we already went into what enzymes is, all right, which is that acid. And now bile from the liver. So give us the bile. So the definition for bile out of the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it's a noun. A yellow or greenish liquid that is made by the liver and that helps the body to digest fats. Also another definition, anger or hatred. Full definition here, 1A. Either of two humors associated in all physiology and... Let me just go to the proper one. Uh, B. A yellow or greenish viscid alkaline fluid secreted by the liver and passed into the duodenum where it aids especially in the emulsification and absorption of fats. All right, so the stuff is being hit with a lot of acid, all right? So from the stomach, it's being hit with acid, you know, acid, toxins, all of that's doing that. Now it's in the small intestines, it's getting hit by enzymes from the pancreas, and now it needs to be hit with bile from the liver, all right? 
bile, as it said, is an uh, alkaline substance. Can you read that part about that? Here we go. This is, um, once again, the definition for bile. Uh, a yellow or greenish viscid alkaline fluid secreted by the liver and passed into the duodenum where it aids, especially in the emulsification and absorption of fats. All right, so now the bile has to come into play because now if the stuff is gonna be used for absorption and now to go into the body, it now needs to be turned alkaline. So what the bile does, it's a, it's a complete alkaline soluble. It even turns more alkaline as it hits it. So the bile is going and it's helping and aiding with the alkaline because now it's being hit with so much acid now it's gonna be used now. It gotta be hit again now with alkaline now. So now it's hitting it with bile now, this alkaline, all right? And now it's bringing, brought into the, um, the jejunum and the ilium, all right? The lower part in the intestine, all right? Which is responsible for absorption of nutrients into the bloodstream. So you see why it's important that it's hit with bile before it's being observed, all right? Because it's just got a lot of acidic things hit with it to break it down. Now it's getting hit with alkaline, you know, soluble, all right? It's getting hit with alkaline now, bile, to, to bring it back. And now so it could go into the, the bloodstream, all right? And it could absorb the nutrients. Continue. Contents of the small intestine start out semi-solid and end in a liquid form after passing through the organ. Water, bile, enzymes, and mucus contribute to the change in consistency. Once the nutrients have been absorbed and leftover food residue liquid has passed through the small intestine, it then moves on to the large intestine or colon. All right, so you see why this is uh, a key part here, all right, because anything that's good inside of this is going to be taken in this phase here in the, in the, lower, in the lower intestine, all right, and... It, and when it goes in here, it's semi-solid, but after it comes out through passing through this organ, it's a liquid, all right? So it's hitting it with bile, enzymes, mucus, all of this, change the consistency to bring it into a liquid by the time it's left out, all right? So, it, all right, and you're going to see that it's going to go to the liver. Those, the, the liquid stuff is going to go to the liver, the kidneys, those areas. And now the, 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 the solids now is now going to go and move on into the intestine, the colon. All right, that's where it goes and it goes there. But continue for us. Pancreas. The pancreas secretes digestive enzymes into the duodenum that break down protein, fats, and carbohydrates. The pancreas also makes insulin, passing it directly into the bloodstream. Insulin is the chief hormone in your body for metabolizing sugar. The liver. The liver has many functions, but its main job within the digestive system is to process the nutrients absorbed from the small intestine. Bile from the liver secreted into the small intestine also plays an important role in digesting fat and some vitamins. All right, so the pancreas, all right, so the pancreas secretes digestive enzymes into duodenum, all right, into the duodenum that break down protein, fats, carbohydrates, all right? So those things that are brought into there, we're gonna get into protein, what a fat is, what carbohydrates is. We actually have our lessons that cover each of those. So we have a lesson that cover protein, lesson that cover fats, and then one that will be on um, carbohydrates, all right? So in this area, it breaks down all of that, which once again, it needs the acid because acid breaks things down, all right? The pancreas also makes insulin, all right? Passing it directly into the bloodstream. Insulin is the chief hormone in your body for metabolizing sugar, so being able to use sugar. So you're gonna see that your body needs sugar to run. So your body actually needs sugar, all right? But for it to be able to use the sugar, it needs insulin, all right? Now, when people are having health problems and stuff, what's happening is that there's a lot of sugar in their body and there's not a lot, there's not a lot of insulin to help the metabolism of the sugar. So anybody that has a parent or you know an elderly person that had diabetes or something, you'll see that when their sugar is high, they have to get an insulin shot, all right? Now, the reason why they need an insulin shot is because 
to metabolize the sugar, which we're gonna get into what all that means, all right, eventually, it's not, we're attacking the digestive system right now, but metabolizing is just the working of it, to be able to use that sugar in how it's supposed to be used, all right, effectively, all right, it needs insulin, all right, so when there's no insulin there, it won't be able to metabolize the sugar as good, all right? It needs the insulin, all right? Which it says insulin is the chief hormone in your body for metabolizing sugar, which is correct sugars, all right? That's what they're not teaching us, all right? So when your parents go in there, they're not teaching them, oh, your pancreas, we just went and see that your pancreas makes insulin. So if you are having problems dealing with sugar or metabolizing sugar, what should you be doing? You should be looking into the pancreas, all right? Because the pancreas is where it makes it. You don't need to go to the doctor to have them give it to you. That doesn't solve the problem, all right? That means there's a problem already there. You need to go to where the source is. It's in the pancreas. This is what's uh, responsible for making it, all right? So in individuals should then go now and seek out particular things that help and aid the pancreas area so that the pancreas can now make more insulin so now they can get rid of that sugar that's going into their blood quicker. All right. Um, so give us liver again. Liver. The liver has many functions, but its main job within the digestive system is to process the nutrients absorbed from the small intestine. Bile from the liver secreted into the small intestine also plays an important role in digesting fat and some vitamins. The liver is the body's chemical factory. It takes the raw materials absorbed by the intestine and makes all the various chemicals the body needs to function. The liver also detoxifies potentially harmful chemicals. It breaks down and secretes many drugs that can be toxic to the body. All right. So the liver has many functions, but its main job within the digestive system is to process nutrients absorbed from the small intestines, all right? So the liver processes all the nutrients absorbed from the small intestines, all right? Bile, which is the, the alkaline um, um, substance, all right? Fluid, liquid that comes from the liver is secreted into small intestine, all right, to help in the digesting of fat and out on vitamins. So with it, because it's coming through the acid through the stomach, the alkaline is there to help it because when it's being digested, you want alkaline there to be digested. You don't want acid there, all right? So the, they hit it with a lot of bile now to assist it because now it's going to digest the fat and the vitamins that was broken down and taken out from the substances. All right, so this is a key one here. The liver is the body's chemical factory. All right, now I'm going to stress this because when I was, you know, driving, because I like to use a lot of nature, all right, I'm driving, I'm like, you know what? I feel, I put the, you know, a lot of fuel in the car. I'm always having to read that up, you know? That's the food. But I'm like, the car is fine with all its other stuff, like, so, like, it's windshield wiper, oil. There's different things the car needs other than fuel. But the car doesn't need that all the time, all right? So I'm like, wait. So when people are eating, they think that the eating is the what's supplying all these fluids for their body. But I'm in the car, I'm like, wait. The fuel is not supplying all these things to the body. So from the fuel, the fuel is not turning it in, making it into windshield wiper and doing all these other things. The fuel is just there for one thing, all right? The stuff comes from somewhere else, but the car doesn't have it, so the car now you have to put it in manually. So every time you have to make sure these little things that, you know, needs these different fuels, you have to make sure you put these things inside of there because the car doesn't supply it on its own, all right? So you have to go get those things, which is various different types of liquids, all right? Not just, you know, the gas. The gas is, you know, that's to make it go, all right? But it needs different liquids as well to make it go uh, to operate steering wheel fluid this fluid all different types of fluid all right so in the body yes we need food to give us energy to do us all of that but it shows us that the liver once it gets the stuff from the food the liver is in charge of making all the chemicals your body needs every single substance your body needs all right the body it's the body's chemical factory. So anywhere the body's getting chemical substances from, it's coming from your liver. 
all right? It takes the raw materials absorbed by the intestine and makes all the various chemical the body needs to function, all of them, which includes protein. So when someone's telling you that you need to eat protein, all right, people don't understand that your body makes protein, your liver makes protein, and it supplies all the various proteins it needs. There's eight essential proteins that it does not supply that that is what someone would need to eat if they're saying they're going to eat protein because there's hundreds of types of proteins and your liver makes hundreds of different types of proteins all right which is protein we're going to go into it it's just a key substance that helps the body function so anything named protein is all different types of protein and they just call it protein because they not, they just put it under that bracket but it's just called protein which is a a substance that helps the body to operate. That's all it is, all right? So you can't just say you're gonna eat protein. What type of protein? There's hundreds of different type of protein. And this is where the deception comes in. Because when someone's saying, yo, I'm gonna eat that protein, now we can ask them, what protein? As we go along, you're gonna see that the liver makes all the proteins you need. It only doesn't make eight out of the hundreds of proteins that it, it, it makes, all right? And that's what we're gonna hone in on as we go along. But continue. No. Actually, sorry, the liver, once again, also detoxifies the body, all right? So it takes out the toxins as well. So not only does it give your body all the chemicals it needs, it takes out all the toxins, all right, it needs as well and breaks that down and secretes it through uh, another avenue, all right, which we'll go along and then get into. We'll continue. Gallbladder. The gallbladder stores and concentrates bile from the liver and then releases it into the duodenum in the small intestine to help absorb and digest fats. All right, so the gallbladder stores and concentrates bile from the liver, all right? So the gallbladder holds the bile, the alkaline substance, all right? And then it releases it into duodenum, which is in the small intestine. And that's for, once again, absorbing and digesting the fat as our body runs on alkaline, all right? Continue colon, the large intestine. The large intestine or colon is responsible for processing waste so that emptying the bowels is easy and convenient. It's a six foot long muscular tube that connects the small intestine to the rectum. The large intestine is made up of the, col the, ce the cecum, the ascending right colon, the transverse across colon, the descending left colon, and the sigmoid colon, which connects to the rectum stool or waste left over from the digestive process is passed through the colon by means of peristalsis first in a liquid state and ultimately in a solid form as stool passes through the colon water is removed stool is stored in the sigmoid s-shaped colon until a mass movement empties it into the rectum once or twice a day all right so here we see the large intestine colon is responsible for processing waste. So once again, if someone was eating flesh now, all right, it already went into the, the, uh, the small intestines, all right, and the body is trying to break everything down. The liver is trying to break everything down. It tries to break it down as much as it can break it down and hit it with acid, all of this to break it down, but the flesh doesn't break down that much, all right? So the, the vegetables break down. Those substances are good to break it down, but once again, it's not used to breaking, it's not, wasn't meant to break down animal flesh. So the more meat and meat you eat, all right? Because once again, it's showing you that it's trying to break this stuff down and now it's bringing it into your colon. It could get piled up into your colon, all right? Because there's a lot more waste than usual that's left when you're eating flesh than when you're eating the vegetables. Because once again, it's trying to break down in your body. So this is why they say the colon is where a lot of that stuff will be stuck when you're eating flesh because it's backed up in there. The flesh can't just break down like that. It's hard. It's breaking down. Yes, it's breaking down, but there's more resistance there. And now when there's more resistance, there's more pileup. And as you eat more and then go to a next meal and the next meal and the next meal and the next meal, it's piling up more, all right, because your body's trying to get rid of it. I want to mention, it's funny that you mentioned that um, the bile itself is alkaline. Mm -hmm. And usually when you want to take certain herbs that are supposed to cleanse parasites mm -hmm. or the colon, they're actually bitter herbs. Mm -hmm. It's 
by them actually there, mm. opposed to acid when you vomit, it, it's a mm. burning sensation mm. in the throat, mm -hmm. opposed to a bitter sensation. Mm. Yeah, so mm. that's why I put it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So bile, so the bile, um, those things are actually bitter. Yeah, bile is very bitter. Mm. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, you can throw a bile too. Yeah. Because it's yeah. like a green color. It has so a bit of like, kind of yeah. clearish, mm. yeah. Mm. Yellowish color, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think if I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like if you're sick and you're yeah, not in yeah, your stomach, yeah, you're throwing yeah. up, it's yeah. like bitter and green. Yeah, yeah. You okay. see there that once again, now when it's inside the stomach, all right, so when it's inside um, the, the colon now, the large intestine, all right, it's trying to now take out all the liquid and put it into a solid form, all right? So it's trying to take whatever waste was left and it's trying to put it into a solid form because first it was going liquid, liquid, liquid because it wants to go and now translate that, bring that into your body, your bloodstream, send that to where it needs to send. Now it needs to come out of your body now. And now it's like, okay, let's turn the waste because there's a lot of waste, there's a lot of solid waste. Let's turn it to more solid, turn it to stool so they could pass through. All right, and then the liquid one goes through um, the kidneys and that thing and then goes out. Um, all right, we pee that out continue it normally takes about 36 hours for stool to get through the colon the stool itself is mostly food debris and bacteria these good bacteria perform several useful functions such as synthesizing various vitamins processing waste products and food particles and protecting against harmful bacteria when the descending colon becomes full of stool or feces it empties its contents into the rectum to begin the process of elimination, which is a bowel movement. All right, so it says it normally takes 36 hours. All right, that's probably let's take it now. It didn't take Adam that long for he, you know, he needed to do his. All right, but, and when they say too, when you eat more alkaline or when you eat more food, you use the bathroom quicker. All right, in contrast to when you're eating different foods. That's the first thing I noticed when you switch the diet, that you're using the bathroom faster, all right, than before. All right, which even somebody, if they eat our food, like somebody else, and they come eat our food, they'd be like, yo, that came through me, yo, quick, look. You know, they always say that if they just go and eat a vegetarian thing because it, your body's going to be able to process that quicker than it's processing, you know, flesh and things that it wasn't made to break down. So once again, the stool is mostly food debris, so it's food debris and bacteria. So all food have debris and bacteria. It doesn't matter how alkaline it is, how pure it was. It's going to come out and have debris, bacteria, all right, and need to go out in stool, all right. But it also has good bacteria, all right. Good bacteria shows, um, synthesizes various vitamins, processes the waste products, and protects the body as well from the harmful bacteria that's inside of there, all right. Once it does that, the colon, once it's full of stool, it now sends the next contents into the rectum, and it's now being ready to process, which they call a bowel movement. All right, so let's continue. The rectum. The rectum is a straight eight inch chamber that connects the colon to the anus. The rectum's job is to receive stool from the colon, let you know that there is stool to be ex ex sorry, excuse me, evacuated and to hold the stool until evacuation happens. When anything, gas or stool comes into the rectum, Sensors send a message to the brain. The brain then decides if the rectal contents can be released or not. All right, so here is a lot. So the rectum is straight, it's eight inch chamber, all right, that connects the colon to the anus. All right, the rectum's job is to receive the stool from the colon. So it now takes that, you know, that stool that was now turned into solid and it puts it into the rectum. All right, I guess the rectum is where it's gonna straighten it up now because now it's being turned into solid in the, in the, in, in the other part. All right, and now the rectum is going to straighten it up. And that's where it gets this little long now. All right, and the rectum job is to let you know that there is stool to be evacuated, pooped out. All right, and to hold the stool until evacuation happens. All right, when anything, gas or stool comes into the rectum, sensors send a message to the brain. So soon. As something enters there, your mind, your body sends an alert to your brain. That's how we're able to like sense that, oh shoot, I got so, you know, something, <laughs> I got something real quick, right? Your body's able to know, all right? 
And then it says that your brain, so your brain's doing a lot in that process, but we're not really realizing it. So then your brain is telling you, yo, do I want to, should I release it or not? You're like, yo, in that quick second, it's like, yo, nah, 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 nah. this is a solid, don't release it. Or, yo, I this is watery. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it lets you know that. It has to let you know this. <laughs> this one is, <laughs> it has to let you know. And that's when you tighten up, you're like, all right, boom. You know what I mean? It's not safe to release. You know, too, even subconsciously, like if you're out on the road, you might com be completely fine. But as soon as you know you're yeah. about to, to go home or you're around the corner, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. your body will up. start to, it knows that you're reaching a place now that, hey, you could start to empty out. It's been waiting. All right. You've been holding it. All right. So your brain does a lot of things. So as I was going through, I'm like, yo, my mind is, a, uh, it's a lot going on that I'm not paying attention to. But the most I makes us ignore that. Why you want to pay attention to all of that? You know what I'm saying? Why you need to know all of that? If you want to hold down on it, then you can. But you still can't directly get all that information that's being taken, that, that's being signaled with your body that's sending up there to let it know that. You just feel it real quick. All right? So it interacts. And right away as it steps in there, the sensors let you know if it's gas. So if it's gas, it let you know if it's gas. So if it's gas, you're like, all right, this is gas. You'll be able to release it. You'll, you know, real quick. If you know it's not gas, you're, it's telling you. It lets you know. You're like, you know what? This is solid, you know? I don't think I want to rip one right now. <laughs> I want to rip one right now. All right, but this is what the body does. All right, so continue. The anus is surrounded by sphincter muscles that are important in allowing control of stool. The pelvic floor muscle creates an angle between the rectum and the anus that stops stool from coming out when it's supposed to, when it's not supposed to. The internal sphincter is always tight, except when stool enters the rectum. This keeps us continent, prevents us from pooping involuntarily. When we are asleep or otherwise unaware of the presence of stool, when we get an urge to go to the bathroom, we rely on our external sphincter to hold the stool until reaching a toilet, where it then relaxes to release the contents. All right, so the anus is the last part. All right, so someone says ass, they're thinking the ass is the whole, that whole ass, all right? Just that little part right there, all right? Two inches long, all right? Not even long, all right? All right, and it's floor muscles, all right? It's two inch long and it consists of pelvic muscles all right and the two anal sphincters internal and external all right the lining of the upper anus is able to detect the rectal content so it's able to see what's coming from the rectum and they oh it's coming and now it's able to you know open up and pull it down all right the pelvic floor muscle creates an angle between the rectum and the anus that stops stool from coming out when it's not supposed to this is why they say when you need to um you need to to stoop down and able to, to, to angle that correctly. The pelvic floor area creates the angle so that when you're using the bathroom, you have to you have to stoop down to do that, all right? So the sphincter, once again, it's showing us that the sphincter is important because it's supposed to keep it tight, all right? The internal sphincter is always tight except when stool enters the rectum. All right, and it shows us that this keeps content, prevents us from pooping involuntarily when we are asleep or otherwise unaware of the presence of stool all right so the internal sphincter is always tight all right it has to stay tight so that you don't you know release by accident all right and then when you get that urge to go to the bathroom you rely on the external sphincter all right to hold the stool until reaching the toilet all right so the external Sorry, the external sphincter, all right, let me go back again. The internal sphincter is the one at the top. That has to be tight because once again, it could, you know, you could be reaching in while you're sleeping. It could be letting in poop now into that part of your body now, and now it's getting ready to poop out while you're sleeping, all right? Because, I, yeah, your body is relaxed now, so your external sphincter can't really operate, right? Because your body is relaxed, so it doesn't really know. So this one we see now. The external sphincter, all right, it knows that when you go use the bathroom, it knows when you're relaxed, when you're in a relaxed state. So it will relax now and it now allows you to use the bathroom. So now it makes sense why the ex the internal one has to be the one that's tight because if you're sleeping, you're in a relaxed state. And if the internal one was loose, the poop will come out and then your external sphincter is loose at the bottom and now you're just pooping while you're, 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 you're sleeping, all right? 
So that is the whole stage and steps of the body, all right? That was seven. So there's seven for the digestion and three for the waste part, which make 10 in completion. Now, this is what the Most High gave Adam as a system to take in this food, all right? This is what the Most High gave Adam, and this is what Adam received to be able to process the food, all right? So we're going to go into, because the Most High gave Adam whole foods. So the food was whole when the Most High gave it to him, and his body now had to process it, all right? But what's happening now is that we're giving the body processed foods, all right? And we're going to see how that affects the body. All right, and what's happening with that. So we're gonna go to how your stomach processes processed foods. All right, because it was not a problem with whole foods. All right, everyone knows the store of whole food. We know what whole food does. All right, the problem in the world is that it's processed already, because you'd be like, oh, I thought this would be easier if you help the process out, lighting it, light on, um, um, lightening the burden for the stomach, that would be helpful for the stomach. But in fact, it's actually making it worse. All right, so having food that's already processed going through the the stomach digestive process it's hurting us even more and we're going to go through a little understanding on that eating processed foods means consuming preservatives additives and artificial ingredients what happens to these chemicals how does your body process them put bluntly your body isn't designed to process and incorporate preservatives, additives, stabilizers, and other artificial ingredients. Because many of these ingredients are fat soluble, your body stores them in its fat instead of using them for energy or cell repair. Unfortunately, however, they don't just sit benignly in your body's fat, they can change cell structure and metabolism. Some even become carcinogens which can, over time, cause cancer. All right. Well, I'm going to read this. Go and get um, fat-soluble. Or is it that just fat-soluble? Fat -soluble. All right. So it shows you, put bluntly, your body isn't designed to process nor incorporate preservatives, additives, stabilizers, and other artificial ingredients. So now, this, now we're going back to the beginning with Babylon. All right with the sorceries. So on the packages and these things, they led us to believe that this is okay. It's okay for us to take this, it's healthy, it's just a preservative, it's preserving it for us. They're not giving us the understanding on what's happening. And going back to sound mind, sound body, we don't have a sound body, we don't have a sound mind. And this is where the deception and why it's pointing out that Babylon's deceiving through the sorceries, all right? Which these things, when we look up some some of the um um what a what a preservative is, you'll see that this is straight sorcery. How could you even figure that out? There's no way you how you figured out that was a preservative. That's straight sorcery, and this is what the Mosai is speaking about. All right, so in our foods today, there's preservatives, additives, stabilizers, artificial ingredients. All right, it shows you that your body is not made to incorporate nor process these. All right. And it shows that many of the ingredients are fat soluble, which means that your body is going to store them in as fat instead of using them for energy or cell repair. So like I was saying, anything that your body cannot use and it's foreign, it will just turn whatever that substance in, it will turn it into fat. So it uses this as fat. All right. Then the fat is attached to what's called an adipole, and the adipole is right where your skin is, all right? Now, you need calories, all right? So that's what they're saying, calories, which is electricity, to burn that out. So once you do, once you do some exercising, your body now takes that thing that it turned into fat, which is toxic, and takes it out of the body, and that's the way it gets rid of the toxins through the fat, all right? Which is why it says, you know, if you're building up a lot of that fat now, you're gonna to have to do more exercise because the only way to get it out of the adipoles and the fat is to burn it off through the calorie to take it out, to put it through the pore, all right? So this is why they say this stuff is happening, all right? So if your body is not using the good fats for energy and to repair your cell, it'll turn it 
into fat and store it and it will stay there. And now it says it just as it will stay there, but it begins to change the cell structure that it's staying in. And it changes the metabolism, which it changes the way that your body is able to just go through the whole process of eating and digesting fluently like how it did before. It now slows it down now. All right, it slows down the process. All right, and then it, even now at the ending can become carcinogen and become cancerous. So that all comes from the fat that was an unknown substance that the body detected. So it's like, uh, 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 unknown substance, <laughs> turn into fat store it you're supposed to work it off boom comes out the pore through calorie now it's out of you all right now if you're not doing enough of that it stores up there now all right give us fat soluble this is, um, this is from uh, medicinenet.com being fat soluble means that they are absorbed in the lymph are transported in the blood with carrier proteins and they can be stored in the liver and fatty tissues the fact that these vitamins can be stored means that they can also build up toxic levels when consumed in excessive amounts. All right. So it says they're stored and why it's being stored, it will now begin to, to, to develop and have different chemicals, different bacteria, different things come there now. All right. Turn into cancer. All right. So the fat soluble is it can't use this fat. It's going to store this fat. All right. So continue for us. Go back here. Um, some even become carcinogens, which can over time cause cancer. Here are just some of the artificial ingredients used in processed foods, along with a quick summary of what happens to them after they enter the body. Antibiotics. Farmers feed many animals, particularly poultry and pigs, antibiotics to reduce the death rate from infection which occurs in very crowded conditions and to enhance growth and weight gain. The residues of these chemicals remain in the processed meat that humans eat. Overuse of antibiotics creates super bacteria that evolve to resist every antibiotic, which, as you can imagine, isn't good for the human population. Unfortunately, consuming small amounts of antibiotics in foods is the best way to help these superbugs evolve. Antibiotic resistant bacteria are becoming a huge problem in the medical field. There, are, there may come a day when a simple cut or scrape could lead to a life-threatening infection we can no longer treat. All right, so antibiotics, all right? Farmers feed many animals, all right, antibiotics to reduce the death rate from infection which occurs in crowded conditions where they're crowded. They also use it to enhance growth, weight gain. And then now they're showing you the residues of these chemicals remain in the processed meat that people eat. So when they're giving these animals these things, all right, now you're gonna eat the animal that has a, a, a you know, enlarged amount of antibiotics inside of there. Now you are eating it now. Now you have more than you're, you're supposed to have now. All right, this is what it's showing you. So if it's in the animal, you're eating it too. And it's showing you now you're gonna have more now. Now the residues of that, all right, the overuse. So it's saying the overuse. So once again, it's not bad, but because you're eating the animal, the animal's being fed this, it's being given more of this. You're now eating it now. You're now having more of it inside of you now. All right, and the overuse of antibiotics creates super bacteria that evolve to resist every antibiotic. All right, so which right, give us antibiotic? Here's the definition. Yeah. All right, so which sometimes you need antibiotics because when something happens, it's coming to repair. It's coming to help. All right. So it's saying that bacteria, all right, the overuse of antibiotics. Okay, all right, I see, I see how that happens. All right, so the overuse, so what's happening now is that every time your body comes into a bacteria, all right, the thing comes stronger, it gets stronger, it gets to know. So the more you're eating this stuff, the bacteria is getting used to these antibiotics to now it's getting stronger and stronger and resisting more. All right, it resists now. So it's able to adapt and resist and grow more strong resistance because it's getting hit with these antibiotics all the time. So it comes into 
the more you're familiar with something, the more you get accustomed to something, all right? So it's not supposed to get accustomed to something, right? Like even a criminal. A criminal knows how this is, that is. You'll be able to go through it. It's when you don't know and get surprised in a one-two time, this is when you get caught off guard. If you're used to dealing with it on a daily, you can come accustomed to it, all right? And strengthen and grow resistance to it. And this is what it's saying that happens with the overusage of antibiotics, which is a good thing. Antibiotics are good. Overusing it now creates a super bacteria that's been waiting like, yo, I'm getting bulky. Yo, this thing, if you can touch me, I've been coming in, been seeing it every day. I know it's planned. I know what it's doing. And now it's able to resist. You know what I'm wondering? There's instances where you'd see or hear stories about somebody that like banged their foot or got a cut. And all of a sudden now their skin's eaten away. Mm -hmm. There's a mm -hmm. bacteria called necrotizing fasciitis, which is a skin eating disease. And I'm wondering, based off of this here, like if they were to test with those superbugs that are speaking about, if that's the result of why they got that. Mm -hmm. That would be, yeah, eating the meat, eating the meat, the antibiotics, it getting strong. Now a cut happened. The stuff's supposed to work right away to battle those things. But the thing is able to just boom yeah. now, uh -huh. Can't help. Nothing can come there to help it, to restore it, to close it down, and now it's spreading now. What they actually have to do, they have to amputate. Mm. Yeah, because there's no cure. They just have to cut it off because right. they'll keep spreading. Right. And they say there's no cure, which we know there's cure, right? They're not going to go and tell the person, you know what? Are you eating a lot of meat? Are you taking a lot of antibiotics? Do you have a super, you know, a super bacteria in you? <laughs> you, you go to the doctor, that's the first thing you recommend, even when the child is sick, you know, antibiotics. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you want to, you know, prescribe to the child here. Mm -hmm. So go to the antibiotics. They don't allow the natural immune system to mm -hmm. act, you know. Mm -hmm. Which is good sometimes to just use that quick, but once again, mm -hmm. over usage, right? It, it's not good to every time someone comes to you with something, you're going to tell them to do that instead of going to fix the initial problem. Like when we pointed out with the insulin in the pancreas, the pancreas makes the insulin, and then when somebody's having problem metabolizing the sugar and the sugar is high, they're just telling them, okay, come take the insulin, come take a sugar shot, tell them to take the insulin. And they're not telling them what the problem is, what to eat to make it create more, nothing like that, right? Which now overusing the insulin, what do you think that's going to do now? All right, so these are the things that we're seeing here. Um, so where are we at now? The definition for antibiotic. All right, give us antibiotic. All right, this is the definition for antibiotic out of the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It's a noun. A substance produced by or a semi-synthetic substance derived from a microorganism and able to dilute solution to inhibit or kill another microorganism. And the second definition here is a medical definition. A drug that is used to kill harmful bacteria and to cure infections. All right, so it kills bacteria, it's a weapon. So once it comes accustomed to that weapon, it now builds a resistance to it. I will say this, with antibiotics, um, whatever, you, if you're gonna take antibiotics, then a wipe out your good bacteria too as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's good to take probiotic if you're gonna take it after, at least to like help out the good bacteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need good bacteria and, you know, in your body as well you can't just kill out all of them and that's what you know using the alcohols the you know all these things do it kills the good and the bad so yeah so it's actually gonna have so i was gonna say this that antibiotics also kill the good bacteria. it kills everything mm -hmm. yeah, it's like alcohol because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like yo something's there right now just kill everything yeah right? like, but sometimes it's good because you're like yo like, just everything has to go real quick because something's there but you don't want to do that all the time now once again Right, that's what they're teaching right now. They're teaching complacency with these, you know, various ways, these various tactics that they're doing. All right, these various procedures. They're not teaching another something else. All right, another option. If you go there, this is what they're gonna tell you. So if you continue go there, they're gonna continue to tell you that it's over usage now. All right, which it comes from being able to use this as a secret, you know, weapon real quick to give you some healing. To now you're dependent on it. Yeah, and I think the efficacy goes down. Huh? Your body's going to build up a resistance, I think. I'd like to believe. Mm -hmm. yeah, continue. Mm -hmm. yeah, continue. All right, this is aspartame. This artificial sweetener becomes a neurotransmitter during digestion, meaning that it can cross the blood-brain barrier. After it crosses that barrier, it can damage and kill brain cells. The body quickly processes aspartame and breaks it down into methanol, which the body can then convert into formaldehyde. This particular conversion can cause changes in cell structure, 
leading to disease and chronic health conditions. Anecdotal evidence has revealed that aspartame is a good antipoison. When this product is damped often but not always, ants will carry it back to the nest and within a few days, all the ants disappear. Aspartame accounts for more than 75% of the adverse reactions to food additives reported to the FDA. Many of these reactions are very serious, including seizures and death. A few of the 90 documented systems listed in the FDA adverse reaction reports include breathing difficulties, depression, anxiety attacks, fatigue and irritability, dizziness, headaches, migraines, hearing loss, heart palpitations, insomnia, joint pain, memory loss, muscle spasms, nausea, rashes, seizures, tach tachycardia, vision problems, weight gain. All right, so once again, it says 75% when they do the thing that they realize is adverse reactions to food additives in this stuff. And a lot of people wouldn't even equate these things with it, all right? Dizziness, headaches, hearing loss, heart palpitations, insomnia, joint pain, memory loss, muscle spasm, nausea, rashes, seizures, cardia, vision problems, weight gain, all right? See, all of this is attached to aspartame, which aspartame, it says is an artificial sweetener, which becomes a neurotransmitter during digestion, meaning it can cross the blood-brain barrier, all right? Crosses that barrier, it can damage and kill brain cells, all right? So it can damage and now kill brain cells that need to operate to, to function properly, to think. The body processes aspartame and breaks it down into methanol, all right, which the body then can convert into formaldehyde. All right, so they're showing that once this thing goes into your body has to do something with it. Now this conversion of what's happening changes cell structure leading to disease, chronic health conditions. All right, so the aspartame has to be broken down and it's broken down into methanol. Then the body has to convert that into formaldehyde. And through these conversions, it's bringing cell structure change to the body, all right? And then we've seen all the different um, reactions that people have from this. All right, so our next one on the list. Caffeine. Caffeine is a quickly processed and relatively safe psychoactive stimulant, which is why so many people consume it in the morning. It raises your blood pressure and blocks adrenosine receptors in your brain, thus reducing drowsiness. It also creates dopamine production, stimulating your brain's pleasure centers and reinforcing feelings of addiction. Caffeine is a diuretic, which means it removes water, as well as minerals such as calcium, zinc, and magnesium from your blood and cells. But with long-term caffeine use, this diuretic effect lessens and or disappears completely. All right, so it says caffeine is a quickly processed, relatively safe psychoactive stimulant. All right, so it's not, you know, it's relatively safe. All right, which is why so many people, once again, they say consume it in the morning. All right, it raises your blood pressure and blocks adesonine receptors in your brain, thus reducing drowsiness. All right, so this is what it does. So it brings up your blood pressure, all right, and it blocks the adesinine receptors in your brain, and then it takes away drowsiness. So this is why people like to, to deal with it, all right? It says it also increases dopamine production. So this is why people can become addicted to it, because I'm gonna see people like, yo, they can't get, you know, you need that coffee every morning, yo. I'm like, what are you getting from that, yo? I couldn't understand what people were getting from it. But now I understand that, oh, it has something in there. They do with it now, and now they like the feeling now. They don't even really know it's there. It's just the feeling that they, you know, they need to have that. Mm -hmm. Their body's accustomed to it. You know, the dopamine got to them. So it increases dopamine production, stimulating your brain's pleasure centers, reinforcing feelings of addiction. So this is why it could become addictive. Caffeine is a diuretic which means it removes water. So it takes waters out your system. So once it's taking waters out your system, with that waters, minerals are gonna come out, calcium, zinc, magnesium, 
from your blood and your cells with long-term caffeine use, this diuretic effect lessens and disappears completely. So with women, women have to watch out because women, they also have a cycle. So during that time, um, metals, things is coming out. If you're taking now diuretic coffee all the time now, more metals is coming out of you. Things that women need now. And now a lot of things that the woman need, they have, she has to go and now put these metals back inside of them. So sometimes even for women, you know, they'll be taking their drinking caffeine. They're, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're dealing with other things as well. They have their 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 uh, period. They have their you know monthly cycle. These things are removing a lot of minerals, a lot of iron. This is why a lot of our women are iron uh, iron deficiency. All right, it's, it's prevalent because they're not realizing that through that monthly cycle, iron's going out and things like adding coffee, adding something else, doing other things can now add to that as well. All right, so continue. High fructose corn syrup, HFCS. The, bar, the body partially processes this chemical concentrated sugar and stores it as fat. In fact, the body metabolizes it into fat very quickly. High fructose corn syrup doesn't suppress the body's production of gerilin, a molecule that stimulates the appetite so your brain doesn't get the message that you've eaten enough food. Plus, the liver converts high fructose corn syrup into triglycerides, which, when present in excess, can increase the risk of heart disease. All right, so look here. The fractose corn syrup, the body partially processes this chemical, concentrated sugar, and stores it as fat, all right, which we went to. Anything unidentified that the body doesn't know, to protect it, turn it into fat. So when all's wrong, it says turn it into fat. I don't know, turn it into fat. What's that? Turn it into fat. All right, anything, what's that? Turn it into fat. That's what the body does. So you have to understand if you're eating something, recognize what it is, look at it, and understand if it's unknown to the body, guess what it's gonna do? It's turning it into fat. It's inevitable. The body cannot do anything with it. All right, and now it's showing you fractose corn syrup is one of them too. It says, in fact, the body metabolizes it into fat very quickly. Soon as you drink it, turn it into fat. All right, can't do nothing with that. All right, so we have to know that. And it's not to say that the way the most I did it, it's not to say that your body is not meant to take in some things that's not meant for it. All right, so we're not saying you can never partake in these things again. All right, because the most I made this and made mechanisms. Okay, one safety, one's turn it into fat. Put it in the fat stores in the adipole. The adipole now has the fat in it through calorie. You burn it through adrenaline. You run the calorie and it comes out. You're pouring. It releases. All right. And it's, you're good with that. So you can take in something that's toxic. The most I made it perfectly fine for your body to process it, take it out and do something else. All right. It's the overusage, the overstoring, the constant, the lifestyle of it now that becomes the problem. All right. So this is what we see happening with the the fractose corn syrup, all right? So it turns it into fat very quickly, all right? And it doesn't suppress the body's production of grenaline, all right? That stimulates the appetite, all right? So your brain doesn't un even know that it ate because that, that grenaline production, all right, was suppressed and now your body didn't even know it ate and now it's hungry again, all right? And then we can't go for the long periods that maybe our forefathers could have went for. Look how long Adam went for. All right, Adam was going for long. We were down the, when we seen that, that was the 83rd day before he was eating his first meal. All right, he held on that long. We can't even go a day, two days without him. Somebody can't even go a day, what do you mean? Adam went 83 days right now. Yo, we can't go one day right now without that many going, yo, it's you, right? And we see animals outside. A lot of times they don't eat for a week. Some of them eat something real quick. They're able to store that and they're able to chill. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't need to eat all the time. When you're watching an animal, it's not eating all the time. You know what animals eat all the time? The greedy ones eat all the time. Yeah. There's something greedy, like a dog. Oh. The dog will eat all the time, yo. Anytime you say you want to eat, yes, it always want to eat. Because it's not eating to survive. It just eat. It just want to eat everything. That's what yeah. dogs do. Just look, eat, take something out, <laughs> eat, 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 eat. It's not hungry. It just want to eat. <laughs> so an animal that understands, yo, I'm full, it doesn't eat that much. You eat and then it's gone and it's doing its thing. All right. So we see, all right, that the, uh, we're already done with practice one, sir? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, we went to hormones now. 
Most factory farms feed hormones and pseudo-hormones, which is unnatural molecules that imperfectly mimic real human hormones, to the animals they raise for meat so that they grow bigger faster. The animals store the chemicals in their fat, which humans then eat. These hormones and pseudo-hormones can affect human growth and development. For example, too much estrogen and pseudo-estrogen increases breast and prostate cancer risk. All right, so hormones. So they put hormones inside of the animal. So once again, a lot of the overusage that happens to us happens because they're tending to another being's body trying to, you know, make that survive and trying to nourish it and grow it up quick for you that they're putting, they're over putting stuff in that. Now you're eating that. You ate that one animal. You went to another one. You went to another one. It has all this access of it. Now we're getting over access of these things in our body and we don't know that it's coming from the meat that people are eating because right? we're not eating it. I'm not eating it. We, we stopped that a long while ago. All right, so this is what it does, all right? So the hormones will be inside of the animals, that they, they, you know, because they use it to raise their animal for meat, so they grow bigger and faster. The animal stores the chemical in the fat, the humans then eat it, all right? You know, even with just all of whatever the hormones and chemicals and antibiotics and all of that there, I remember when we first started on this walk and, you know, taking that health approach and then, you know, there would be people that would be, you know, against vaccines and like drugs and things of that nature but yet they're eating the same animals that's taking all of that stuff mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what do you think is going to happen with you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're not looking at that all right so it shows us here too much estrogen and pseudo estrogen increases breast and prostate cancer which comes from the extra hormones in the animal now you're eating the extra hormones. Now you have too much hormones, and now there's a problem, all right? Which we see a lot of this. Is this not coming from vegetables, all right? It's not coming from beans, legumes, whatever you want to call it, rice, grains. It's coming from flesh, which people call today meat, all right? Let's continue. Monosodium glutamate, also known as, or better known as MSG, this ubiquitous additive, which is also known as a free glutamic acid, is present in many processed foods and affects the body in many ways, including the following. MSG is an excitotoxin, which means it overstimulates and damages brain cells. MSG may be addictive, so you may crave foods that have MSG and eat more of them, creating a vicious cycle. MSG stimulates the Udemy taste bud, fooling your body into thinking that the food you're eating is nutritious. MSG changes the diameter of your blood vessels, which is why some people feel warm and develop headaches after ingesting it. MSG stimulates the pancreas, causing it to produce more insulin, so blood sugar levels drop and you get hungrier sooner. MSG intake has been implicated in the development and exacerbation of diseases such as Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, stroke, obesity, and depression. MSG does occur naturally in meats and other foods, but it's bound up in the protein complexes of those foods and has less of an effect than the added MSG. All right, so it's bound up in the protein complex. So the protein sometimes it operates like uh, a prison guard. So if there's something bad in there, it will walk it through the whole body to protect it. So it will make sure that, yo, this thing can't do too much in there. So that's why it's saying that it's bound up in the protein complexes because, yes, it's there, but when it's there, a protein is it's bringing it around and doing whatever it needs to do. All right, so like, for instance, iron as well. Iron needs a protein to take it around into your blood. So it has to be escorted like a guard. So a guard, a protein has to come to it because, you know, it's, it can be toxic and have to bring it and bring it into the areas of your body and escort it there, all right, to make sure it can't do anything else. So this is what it's saying about the MSG, that it's bound, yes, it can occur naturally in some foods, but it's bound up and always protected and escorted by a protein. 
you know, that's where MSG, they'd always have on the Chinese restaurants mm-hmm. will tell you that there's no MSG. No, because they, they were using it for so long, yeah. though, right? Now they're going to something else. <laughs> 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 what is that new one, though? Like, <laughs> MSG, <laughs> see, they found a new thing, though. <laughs> all right. But that's what they were using a lot of times, all right? So um, look up free glutamic acid. All right, but it's present in many processed foods, affects the bodies in many ways. Look how much ways. It's an excitotoxin, which means it overstimulates and damages brain cells. So it overstimulates the brain. So it will tell you, it will make your brain be like, yo, this was good. This is hitting. This is good, which makes us go to the Chinese. So the Chinese people love it because they use it. We can't really tell. But yo, look how much people love. They know what Chinese food does. We know what it even smells like the next day. All right. We know that, yo, you get that, it has a clock real quick. And we would still go and be getting it because, and they'd be like, oh, what fried food do you like? Oh, I like fried food, fried, Chinese fried rice. Everyone loves it because they're jam-packed it with the MSG, got everybody hooked on it. And now this is what the result of the hooking is doing. That Some people are coming off of it, but a lot of people are still hooked on Chinese food. There's a time where, yo, yo, black men need Chinese food. I don't see people eating Chinese food that much now because why? They're saying no MSG in it no more. I don't even ever see people order but enough Chinese food. You know what it is already. When you go in their store, they're not eating their own food. Mm. They're cooking that for the people. Them. I remember the last time, this was, I don't even know how long, over a decade. I remember the man was cooking up the food there. And the man had his bowl of white rice off to the side eating that. He wasn't eating any of the food that he had there. Mm-hmm. So once again, it's, uh, it's cytotoxic and it overstimulates and damages the brain cells. Uh, MSG may be addictive, so you crave foods that em- that have MSG and eat more of them, all right, creating a vicious cycle, going back to the Chinese food, all right, which they use, um, the Chinese use as a, as a weapon. As I'm going to look into it, the Chinese use it as a weapon. It's not any of their food of their nation. It's strictly food to make you sick, give you more sugar. It's all, it's a different world that we're living in. They're using these as weapons now, so... That Chinese food with the socks on it, the socks, the sugar, it's all weapon to go against the body. <laughs> yeah, you know that it's like the socks, <laughs> yeah, and the blood, and like, yo, come get it. You know, the broccoli, the this, the it's MSG in there, up. that straight, a Chinese weapon, nuclear <laughs> weapon right now. <laughs> As we read what's going on. You're right? And they're like, hey, just put it on all the places in America. Go there, open up shop everywhere. Mm-hmm. Have them all sell sweet and sour to them, mm-hmm. orange chicken to them, everything to them. General Tao. General Tao, everything. <laughs> General Tao. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fry and sugar. Fry and sugar on it. Right? Oil and sugar. Yeah, we used to work with this guy, this uh, old Asian man. He's Chinese. He used to say the same thing. He's like, the majority of the Chinese food is not real Chinese food. Laugh at those stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not real Chinese food. It's just for the Americans. Yeah. But they have their real Chinese food. Mm-hmm. Like when you go to market and stuff, that's what you know. They have mm-hmm. the real Chinese mm-hmm. restaurants over there. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That's those are the good ones. Which yeah, people don't even like that because it doesn't have that oh the sweetness nah, and the, all that. Nah. It doesn't really look appetizing. You're like, what's all of this? You know. Yeah. All right. So it stimulates the umami taste bud fooling your body to thinking the food you're eating is nutritious so once again it fooling your body to tell you that this is nutritious instead of letting you know that this is bad all right changing the diameter of your blood vessels all right and it stimulates the pancreas causing it to produce more insulin so blood sugar levels drop all right so blood when blood sugar levels drop that means the insulin so once again insulin metabolizes it so too much insulin will now use out the sugar, and now that person doesn't have as much sugar. So now they need sugar, all right? So you could have too much sugar, or you could have little sugar, all right? So when it's producing too much insulin now, their blood sugar level is dropping, all right? And now, when that happens, people get hungry sooner too as well. Um, So MSG intake, they say, is um, implicated in the development of certain diseases like multiple sclerosis, stroke, obesity, depression. All right, so we go to the next one, nitrates. Nitrates and nitrites. These chemicals are used in processed meats such as hot dogs and bacon. They bind with hemoglobin, the molecule in your blood that carries oxygen throughout your body, thus causing dizziness, headaches, and rapid heartbeat. Your liver converts nitrates into nitrosamines, 
which are carcinogenic in animals and probably humans too. Nitrates are carcinogenic in humans. Olestra, you find this artificial fat in snack foods. At first, snack food manufacturers tooted Olestra as a simple way to lose weight because the body doesn't digest it, meaning that it travels right through the body. Unfortunately, this indigestible property causes some severe and unpleasant physical reactions, which, you, which can keep you chained to the bathroom. Plus, the fake fat binds to fat-soluble vitamins your body needs and takes them right out of your body. All right, so Olestra, I went and looked this up. There's, there were snacks, I guess this was in the, the late 90s and stuff. They were coming out with snacks and it was labeled Olestra and it was saying that, hey, you know, this is a snack food uh, and it's good for you. It's titled as a simple way to lose um, weight because the body doesn't digest it, all right? So it means it goes right through the body, all right? So unfortunately... It's indigestible, all right? Causes severe, unpleasant physical reaction, all right? And it can keep someone chained to the bathroom because it's going right through the individual, all right? But it doesn't digest it, as it says, all right? And then it says the fake fat binds to the fat-soluble vitamins in your, bo um, your body needs, all right? So it now takes the vitamins your body needs, and now while it's going right out of you it's taking all the good stuff that your body needs and it's going right out so that's what Alestra was doing they don't truly use too much of that anymore but i still see it in some of the stuff but they hide it now so before they're coming out with chips and the chips i went and looked the chips would say Alestra on it Alestra chips all right so there's be like oh you're gonna eat this chips and the chips will just run right through you all right but as time went on that whole thing went down and it's a little bit of time right so this was before our time we were young at those times you know what I'm thinking? There's a, back in the 90s, um, there was a, a diet program. I think it probably still around called Nutrisystem. And I remember they had like a weight loss chips. Mm. I'm going to check and see yeah, if they that had that. Because yeah, that that I used to think, yeah, I used to think like weight <laughs> loss chips. That's yeah. why I looked at it. I was like, yo, weight loss chips. Yeah. <laughs> so that's true. All right. So continue to try trans fat. Trans fats. These fake fats made by hydrogenating polyunsaturated fats, such as corn oil, are one of the most dangerous artificial ingredients. They raise your risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, high blood pressure, and cancer. Because your body doesn't recognize that trans fats are artificial, they become part of your cell membranes, making the cells weaker. Consuming trans fats increases the level of LDL, cholesterol, the bad stuff in your blood. Your body easily stores trans fats but can't easily retrieve them for fuel, so they cause weight gain. All right, so trans fats. All right, these are fake fats, they keep calling them, all right? Fake fats, all right, because your body, good fats, your body takes and turns into energy. Fat is good. So once again, fat is good. Good fats is good because your body takes it, turns it into energy, renewed strength, repairing your body with cells, all right? Good sugar, all right? So sugars from fruit, different things like that. That also good for your body. Your body needs to run on sugar. As we're seeing, if your body has too little sugar, too much sugar, there's something wrong. Sugar runs your body, all right? It's when these fake ones are there, that's making it bad, all right? So the trans fat shows you comes from um, polyunsaturated fats such as corn oil and, you know, one of the most dangerous artificial ingredients, all right? So, so the corn oil, one of the most dangerous ingredients, all right? Raise your risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, blood pressure, and cancer, all right? Because your body doesn't recognize that trans fats are artificial, they become part of your cell membranes, all right? So it's fake fat. So it's like, oh, it got tricked. It's a good fake fat, all right? So your body will be like, oh, shoot, this is fat, and bring it in. So it will bring in the artificial fat now. And now the artificial fat will become part of your cell membranes, making the cells weaker, all right? Consuming trans fat increases the level of LDL, cholesterol, the bad stuff in your blood. All right, and your body easily stores trans fats. All right, so your body will take that trans fat, and store it, you know, just like what it does with unknown substances, but it can't easily retrieve it for fuel. So, once again, the main purpose for your body takes fat is to get it for fuel and to turn it into energy, which is to turn it into electricity. All right, or fire, to say, and, and then you know, so once it's there, it can't retrieve it for fuel, the fat is being 
stacked up and your adipoles, now the, the, the weight is gaining because now to get rid of the fat, you have to use calories. So the calories brings it out, but to activate the calories, you need adrenaline. So the adrenaline now activates the calorie, the calories, energy, the calorie hooked on to the adipole. The fat is on the adipole, now it comes out of the pore and you just got rid of the fat. All right, but if you don't do that, it's just gonna be building up. All right, and this is how the body operates. So those were the additives, the different things that's hitting their body. This is what the Most High is speaking about in Revelations 18 when he's talking about Babylon, all right? And the sorceries they're using on the people because people, this is in people's regular diet. This is in the store, and this is being okayed from the head. And people might not know this, but this is being okayed from the church. The church has control over the earth, and as long as people don't believe Christ is in control, she's able to do this. All right. And she will hide herself that she doesn't have the control because she wants to stay in this position. The more people believe, the more people understand, then somebody else can be like, you know what? I'm his woman. I'm the really the woman. And they don't want that. All right. The woman wants to make sure she's the only woman. So no woman is ever going to come to him. All right. By giving false information up. And this is what's happening with Babylon. And they deceive the nations and people are dealing with this day all the time. And this is what's creating the deception. Now, when the most I dealt with us, we have to go through the Essenes, their strict discipline, their diet, learn all of that and get off of this and develop better habits than these. Because it's not to say that we can never deal with this. The body was made, to, the most I made it so we can handle this and take it out. It's the overusage of it, all right? Making it your diet. Not like, you know what? I've been doing this as my diet regularly. And you know what? Today, I feel like I want to eat that real quick. I can eat that real quick. My body is made to do that real quick, all right? When it's not made to live on it day to day. All right, so we're just going to go to the liver real quick. <clears throat> the liver. The liver has a number of different roles in the body, including breaking down fats, using bile stored in the gallbladder, processing proteins and carbohydrates, filtering and processing impurities, drugs, and toxins, generation of glucose for short-term energy needs, and from other compounds like lactate and amino acids. All right, so once again, the liver is what would break all of these things down all right so it breaks down the fats it uses bile to store it in the bowel um in the gallbladder it processes the proteins the carbohydrates filtering the processing impurities drugs toxic generation of glucose short term you know the um generation of glucose for short-term energy needs from other compounds all right like lactate and amino acids all right so when these things ultimately are overburdening the liver because the liver is dealing with all the toxins. So it's constantly having to deal with these things. And this is why liver problems, one of the most problems in the Americas, all right, because look how much things it's attacking. It never has a break. It never has a break. And then now, guess what? If someone's now running alcohol, alcohol directly is the one, another one of the quickest things that the body is not used to. And now it's going to the liver. The liver is constantly working over burdening it needs to rest at some point and it's not able to rest all right because of the overburdening of it all right so in conclusion you got to stay away from trans fats msg preservatives additives corn syrup aka bad sugars all right i list some liver foods for your liver cranberry um, blueberries cranberry grapes beetroot juice nuts olive oil all right good foods for the liver all right, we're going to go to First uh, Corinthians six thirteen. The book of First Corinthians chapter six verse thirteen: meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. All right, so here he says, belly, meats for the belly, belly for the meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. All right, so the most high, we see where the belly came from. It wasn't always here, all right? There's nothing good in it. When you really look at it, it brings a lot of burden. It brings in all of this stuff that we're seeing taking place now, which Adam foreseen that. He foreseen the burden of the stomach and the thickening of the skin and the liking of the food. So one thing that we're seeing with these ingredients, they taste good. They make you like them. Adam seen this. He already knew that this stuff was out there. All right, you get MSG, you might get addicted to it because it's not like it tastes bad. These things taste good. 
All right, bring on further deception. And they make it look appealing to us. Yeah, yeah. Eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, makes it stop from breaking down, changing color, doing this, all of that to keep your eyes appealing to it so that you want it. Right, because many of the things that you're reading, your eyes do a lot of the stuff before you even touch it. You're already, your mouth's already watering for the food. So them knowing that you want it through your eyes, they're like, yo, if we just set it right and make it look good, they'll come and get it because it start, they're already eating it with their eyes. Make it smell good. Yeah, too. make it smell good. They're already eating it. You're already yeah. like, your mouth's already, you don't even know that your body is already eating it. You already started the process from the smelling and stuff. It's already developing saliva, all of that. And now you're just going there now <laughs> to, to finish it off. All right, so we're going to go to Philippines 3.17. Brethren, be, ye, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. All right. So, brethren, be ye followers together of me. Mark them which walk as so ye have an example for us, an example. All right. For many walk whom I have told you. All right. Weeping. All right. And they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. All right. Whose end is destruction. All right. And we see that this is what's happening with the Catholic Church. All right. Whose God is their belly. All right. Because they love their precious things. They love all the things that they have. And one of the main ones that we're even seeing is that the health and stuff, it doesn't enable you to think properly. And what we're able to think and use our heads now, we're able now to see how the world operates. And now we can make moves to do changes now. All right. And this is what they fear, though, they're doing all of this stuff. All right. Because what does this stuff and poisons do to your body? It makes you not able to think correctly. Why? Someone doesn't want you to think. The Bible points out who it is. It's Babylon. It's the Catholic Church. She is doing this. And especially us with the church, we're realizing that because she's trying to hide a lot of the understanding on the earth and the doctrine that's stipulated around Christ. All right. So with that being said, we went through a plethora today. All right. We went through the body. We went to seeing the Adam. All right. First, we started off with Revelation 18 and Mosai showed us that Babylon, all right, deceived the nations of the earth through the sorceries, all right, which we went into. It was pharmacy, which is administering of drugs, poisoning, using these deceptions. And we've seen that happen through the preservatives, through these things. One of these preservatives I looked up, it was on figs. And the way they found that preservative is that they were doing mining and something blew up. And they realized that, yo, the thing didn't didn't break down. Like, it didn't break down. So they're like, yo, this thing could preserve. So now they put that on something to preserve. So this is how they're coming out with how they find these things out. All right. This literally came from a mining thing. Oh, explosion happened. Something was preserved. They realized that the thing wasn't touched. It stayed the same. So we're going to use it to, as a preservation now to preserve something and give it to someone to eat. All right. This is madness. This is this is the stuff that is talking about Babylon is doing, all right? Which they're the ones who control all the doctrine on the earth. All right, so we went through today. We went and seen that we went and we seen the Most High telling us not to be in our errors on how to operate in our life, not to continue dealing, um, bringing the destruction of our own hands upon us, all right? And the importance of a sound body. We went into... Um, Greek understanding and their proverb was a sound mind is a sound body and they heavily equated mind and body on the same level all right that if once you have a good diet you can now think properly and now operate you know educationally and operate as a unit and have organization all right so that's how we're able to do that with all this happening we're able to organize have an organization now and all of that because our minds are thinking we're becoming more healthy all right, we went and we seen that Adam, after he sinned, he, his body was changed to an animal body, all right, and was told that he needed earthly food. He needed power to strengthen and restore it, all right? He needs to eat to strengthen and restore it, all right? The most I kept telling him that, all right? Adam, before he even ate the food, had divine understanding and foreshadow that this food, if I eat it, all right, is going to make my stomach 
burden. It's burden my stomach is going to make my flesh thick. All right, which we see all the stuff the stomach has to do with the, with the digestion. And we see how the flesh can get thick because anything that is, um, anything that it, it doesn't agree with, it turns into fat. And that now can thicken your flesh. So Adam already seen all of this. And he already understood that this stuff tastes good. I will start to like earthly food. And he knew that he would fall away from that. All right, he would fall away from the true way, which is the heavenly way. And he would like the earthly stuff. All right, we took in that they never ate earthly food in the garden. All right, so they never knew how to eat the food we eat now. They didn't know that they had to bite it and digest it and do all of that. All right, so the food that in the garden was a different way that they were eating it. When you hear eating, eating can be done many different forms. All right, information can be eaten. All right, we eat the information right now. So the way Adam and them was eating in the garden wasn't the way we eat now, all right? They needed to be taught how to eat the fig, all right? So it wasn't biting that had to do because it's just a fig. They needed to cook it anything, all right? So the Most High brought us into burden, and he showed us, all right? So we went into burden, and we showed that that's a load or a weight. So Adam knew that his body, now that he's eating this stuff, would have a load or a weight, all right? And now the Most High had to give him a digestive system and able to carry that load or that weight and to give it a duty to break it down and that it could come out of the body and give the body its nutrients. All right. All right, so, all right. Adam received his digestive system. He woke up in the morning and he felt sick, all right. We realized, I equated that too, to having to use the bathroom in the mornings. All right. He didn't have a digestive system yet. The most I had to give him that. All right. And once that happened, Adam realized that him having this body that has a lot of waste and has to go through this, this body can't go back into the garden, which was perfect, which was clean. All right. And now that his body had strange function. All right. So we went to the first time in history that humans got a digestive system and seen how that happened and what Adam was afraid of. And he was afraid of the body being overburdened, the stomach being overburdened, and the flesh getting thick, all right? And we went into the whole makeup of the body, the seven parts of the stomach, which makes a complete stomach, then the three parts that deal with the waist, which is 10 in total, all right? Seven and three, which is the most highest numbers. All right, and we went into the digestive system, how it works, and we went into the preservatives and all of that to see what our body doesn't agree with. So our body doesn't agree with anything that's unnatural. And these things are placed into our foods. And this is what Adam was afraid of. And this is why we're coming back to whole foods. All right, and this is how the stomach and the body works. All right, and I outlined that the liver makes all chemicals that the body needs. It's the chemical factory. It makes proteins, it makes all of that, all right? So this was just a general understanding on how the body functions, what it's doing, and how it fell from where it fell from, and what happened with Adam, all right? And the function of the body and what it rejects. So it rejects all things that are foreign to it, and it turns it into fat. And the more, the overusage of things, all right, also brings about diseases and different stuff, which we see a lot of it's coming from the meat them putting it into the animal, using a lot of it, the animal, and now someone eating it and eating many animals, many different meat dishes, and now having an over access of these things inside of them. All right. So with that being said, we're going to have more anatomy lessons coming. We're going to go into the liver. We're going to go into what calories is. We're going to go into, um, we're going to go into kidneys. We're going to go into a plethora of things. All right. When it comes to the body. All right. So this was just the first introduction where you have to start with Adam was given a digestive system. This is how it operates. This is the challenges that's happening. This is the sorcery that's taking place with it. This is how it truly operates, runs, and functions. All right? And we've seen that the, the, the liver makes all the essential chemicals it needs except for eight. And we're going to get into that when we get into the lesson on the liver. All right? The eight essential amino acids or proteins that your liver does not make all right so that's the only thing that it doesn't make so it would be these eight things that you would need or eight types of proteins that you would need just to make sure it's on your plate so with that being said we're gonna go to philippians 4. Okay. it's in the book of philippians chapter 4 verse 8 finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just 
whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. All right. With that being said, we want to say all praises be unto the Most High Almighty, a high is Jehiah Christ. That was our lesson today where we went into the anatomy of the body, which was the digestive system. And we started with the book of Adam and Eve where the Most High, um, you know, gives Adam a digestive tract so he could be able to eat his first meal as him leaving the garden, he never ate earthly food. All right. And he was afraid of his skin thickening and his stomach being overburdened. And we went into how that relates to our health and what how that relates to us today and what that all entails. So with that being said, we want to say our praises be unto the most high mighty Ahaya Shia Christ. This is the Essen Community Church of Christ. My name is Archbishop Shamar. And I'm Bishop Barak. Alright, this is the Essen Community. Have a blessed rest of your Sabbath and enjoy the Lord's Day tomorrow as well. And blessings on to everybody as we're in important times right now. Alright? So blessings. Blessings.